hello. Bit off the cuff this month. Um, it's Burns night, and we've all been chatting, watching a few videos this evening. Uh, so I thought I'd get the whiskey out. A couple of people said they fancied a dram this evening, so I thought, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Alex James is in. He says, because this is whiskey, whiskey night, and I was going to save you from a hangover about to come. <laughs> I think Alex is on a mission this evening. Uh, Cat to me, he says, all right, you bunch of dirty boys. Hey there, mate. How are you, sir? How you doing? Did everyone enjoy the videos this evening from myself and John? Um, we certainly enjoyed making them. I don't know if you caught the live stream that we did with Ben from Creative Juices last week. We had a lot of fun there that day. Really good. Um, Alex James says, what even is Burns Night, though? Um, it's sat to do with Robert Burns, isn't it? The famous writer from Scotland. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I don't really know. It's just an excuse to have a few whiskeys, isn't it? Uh, Jack says, you know, it makes sense, Rodders. You know it makes sense. Do it. Do it to Captain Me. Vicky's in. Hello, Vicky. How you doing, Vicky? Are you all right? I'm going to get in. I'm going to get stuck into a dram. What's everyone on? What's everyone's poison? I'm going for the Glen Morangy, the Santa, the 12 year old. Very nice drop. Very nice drop. Uh, cheers. Luke is in. It says, hey up, you lovely ginger ninja. Hello to you, mate. How you doing? How are you doing? Um, Alex says, yes, beautiful brewery. It is a lovely brewery. Old dairy farm. And they converted in. It looks lovely. It looks lovely. Um, Captain Meat says, videos of last week or two. Get a full 10 meat rating. <laughs> a 10 meat rating. I'll take that. I'll take that. Rich is in. Hello, Rich. How are you doing, buddy? How are we doing? Who's actually drinking a whiskey? Who's on a dram? Uh, Vicky says, all good here. We're on the milk tonight for bedtime. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, Vicky. I'll let you off. I'll let you off. Are you playing Fortnite? Are you doing Fortnite with Abby tonight? I know she's downstairs on her own at the moment. Uh, Connor Jackson is in. Hey there, mate. How are you doing? I'm very well, mate. I'm very well, Connor. How are you? Uh, Jack says, on the Kenyan single origin. I'm not, not familiar with that one. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, Alex says, the Jacob Bite is what I'm on. Seems to be a bit of a mystery whiskey. Now, I don't seem to know about it, but the local garage sells it cheap. So, yes. <laughs> it's a winner, then. It's a winner. Cheap and cheerful. Uh, Luke says, I'm going to have a few uh, cherry whiskey liqueurs before searching out something special. Good man. Good man. Uh, David Wilson is in. Hello, David. How are you, mate? Hope you're well. Uh, just a little impromptu Burns Night thing. Um, I brought it up at the weekend and said I might do a I might do a little live on on Tuesday evening, have a couple of whiskies if anyone was up for it. And um, yeah, so here we are. Here we are. Uh, Vicky says, "Have a good evening. See you Saturday." What's going on Saturday? <laughs> What's going on Saturday? Uh, Jack says, uh, it's coffee, Paul, you slag. You wouldn't know about it, mate. It's a bit posh for you, pal. <laughs> coffee? At this time of night? God, no. God, no. Uh, I'm good. Can't drink on school night. I'll have a virtual whiskey. Who would have a bourbon, though? Can't lie. I do like a bourbon as well. Uh, they said, good, thanks. How are you and Abby? We're good. We're good. We are well. We are well. I've been working. Abby's... Uh, Abby's on a night shift tomorrow, so she can have a lie in tomorrow morning. It's all the same, mate. It's all the same. Jack says, you stick to your Nest Cafe. You can't. There's no wrong with Nest Cafe. No it wrong with Nest Cafe. I have their, uh, their Dolce, Dolce Gusto Pods from Nest Cafe. Very nice, too. Uh, Luke, Jer, Poshkit, Jack. Yeah, Jack's, Jack's become the tough. Jack's become the tough of the room. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Uh, Vicky says, your wife's birthday meal. I didn't know anything about it. I'm sure it's a family thing. Because we going, are we going to have these bums and that? I don't know. We'll talk about this in private. <laughs> I didn't even know. Uh, even everyone had a uh, haggis for tea. Unfortunately, not a whiskey fair. We'll let you off. So what did you have? What did you have with your, with your haggis tea? What did you drink with it? Uh, Captain Meats on Aldi's Pretend the Whole Garden. Ah, yes, I've seen that about. I've seen that about there, uh, 
their knockoff Belgian one. Is it any good? Is it any good? I ain't been there in Aldi's in ages. Uh, they said I might have a whiskey later. Did have haggis today. Oh, see, I like haggis, and I never even thought about about going out and getting some. I had uh, I had a pizza for dinner this evening. It would have been alright if it was an Italian night, I suppose. Um, Dave says, "I brand all." Jack says, uh, "Look, if you met me, I'm so far from posh. Half gypsy, half farmer, born with plastic spoon in me, God, mate. Don't you worry about that." <laughs> Uh, which is Jim Beam or JD? Is that, is that a question? I mean, out of the two, I'd always drink JD. I always prefer Jack Daniels to uh, Jim Beam. Um, but then they're two completely different whiskeys, to be fair, aren't they? Jim Beam being a bourbon and Jack Daniels being a Tennessee whiskey. So it's difficult to compare the two, but I do prefer Jack Daniels, personally. Uh, never had a whiskey sour, though. Are they any good? The thought of adding raw egg whites puts me off a bit. I'll be honest, I've never had a whiskey sour. Never had a whiskey sour. Never touched one. Anyone else had a whiskey sour? Which is, I don't do coffee. Makes me feel earth a kit. No, really. I struggle in the morning about coffee in me. <sighs> What's the spoon pot around? <laughs> Start out sketching it. Talk about how hard they had it. it was a kid, and they'll compare how bad their, their upbringings were. They just get more and more ridiculous as they go down. It was a borrowed plastic spoon. Uh, got to see the Tinker Man uh, get the push at Watford. He's a top bloke. It's the return of Roy. Mad, isn't it? It's mad, isn't it? How Watford go through their managers. Absolutely mad. Every few months they go for another one. Absolutely nutters they got in charge there. Uh, Alex says, uh, I leave. I leave. Uh, Jack says, uh, man gets the ghetto, enjoys a few finer things in life, and look at the hate he <laughs> It came from nothing, I love you, no, Big Jack. He came from nothing. Big says, all right, I won't tell you if you forgot. George didn't know until today, anyway. I didn't know. I didn't know this was a confirmed thing. Uh, my uncle from Lilith. Oh, bless her. Bless her. She's crawling now. No catching her now. <coughs> Let me say it's a good effort. Nah. I'll have to have a go. I'll have to pop to an Aldi. Alex says, I like them both. It's much depends what mood I'm in. Ain't that the truth? Uh, he also very much enjoys talking in third person. <laughs> They're talking about himself. Jim B was nice with Coke. Yeah, Jim B with Coke. Chris says, uh, Paul, I hope you good. Let's not talk about uh, the game on Sunday. Oh, there's nothing really to say, is it? It was always going to be a Chelsea win. But there you go. Uh, he's on the Vorsteiner. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Captain Meek says, uh, give us a B. Give us an R. Give us an E. Give us a W. Oh, I'm not going down that route. Bloody hell. I think everyone on YouTube did that to death last night, didn't they? Um, should we go there? Do you want to go there? Do we really want to talk about them anymore? Uh, I don't know. I, I watched the documentary. I watched the documentary on Brew Dog last night and I I came away from it completely nonplussed, if I'm honest. But it was BBC to making a lot of accusations and suggesting a lot of things have happened, no evidence. Um I don't know, it was just a load of noise, wasn't it? It was just a bit of a gossip mongering thing for an hour. I don't know. But um I still think Brewdog's beer is rubbish, so I'm not, I'm not really interested. It's no, it's no loss to me. <clears throat> yeah, plastic spoons, Jack. Cool, blimey, that is posh. We used our fingers. <laughs> Sometimes our siblings' fingers. Love it. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, we get Simon Howie Haggis for Morrison's. Very nice. They also have diced sweet. You've got to have sweet, haven't you? With a bit of haggis. You've got to have sweet. Uh, what for the embarrassing? Trying to copy my club. But unfortunately for them, they get relegated. Big up, Ranieri. How old is Ranieri now? I mean, he must be getting on a bit. Must be getting on a bit now, Ranieri. Ah. Where are we are? I only drink tea or Red Bull for my boost. Can't beat the Honey Jack and Lemonade. Honey Jack and Lemonade is nice. Honey Jack and Ginger is nice as well. Honey Jack and Ginger Ale. Really nice. Um, I don't really want to talk about it. It's just predictable, isn't it? Is Apple Jack? I like it. 
It's not really a proper whiskey. It's more of a it's more of a cure, I guess. I mean, it's thirty five percent, but it, it's tasty. It's a nice drink. Uh, for some reason, it won't let me send the Scotland flag. Yeah, it, it, it stopped doing that during the um, it stopped doing that during the Euros last summer. Oh, I could put up flags and that. It was um, very weird. And obviously, not they've not sold it out. No, still the same. <clears throat> Applejack is good, Alex. Jack says, uh, you've got me there, mate. Just old, old crack spoon for me. <laughs> uh, anything with Jack uh, in name is great. Let's have it right. It's true, Jack. It's true. It was not a winner. Uh, can we just agree to ignore them? As most people seem to hate them. Yeah, that suits me. Who's having a worse week? Bojo, James Bott, or Prince Andrew? Or oh, blimey. <clears throat> I don't think any of them are particularly looking forward to getting up in the mornings at the moment, are they? Flavor Rules have the same brand. Very nice. Sounds nice that apple sours and uh, wasn't what I expected. Tasted like. Sounds like, well, that sounds nice. Had apple sours and wasn't what I expected. Tasted like a C. Chaps 40th birthday party. Uh, Mosey. Hello, Mo. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm enjoying. Every inch review you did. Keep doing what you do best. Much love and support from Algeria. Cheers and hope we all get to enjoy a cold dog maybe one day. Sounds awesome, mate. Thanks for watching, dude. Hope you're well. <clears throat> even Frosty, even Frosty Jack's Jack. It has both our names in it. There you go. Frosty Jack's a perfect product for you guys. Uh, Ranieri getting on now. After Leicester, he should have uh, should have retired. He didn't do much after Chelsea sacked him. I see, he should have got out of top, shouldn't he? Should have left it there. Winning the league with Leicester. Don't really get don't really get much better than that, does it? What what else was he gonna do to get above that? Oh, it's got for a large dram. There we go. <clears throat> He's gone for a large one. Uh you had a friendly spoon owning troll. Uh, how was your weekend, there, mate? Did you do much? I just worked pretty much. So I worked. I worked Saturday. Did the stream when I got back. Um, Sunday again, I worked, and then I watched the football, and then sucked about it for the, for most of the evening. To be honest with you, <laughs> that was my weekend. How about you, Chris? Because uh, I'm a Liverpool fan. How funny would it be to see Everton get relegated? It would. It would be funny to see a club the size of Everton. Playing in the second tier. That would be mad, wouldn't it? Half a billion quid spent in the last five years and moving grounds. <laughs> yeah, Rafa went in and stitched them up, didn't he? He's got in and stitched them up. Uh, I still like a Jager bomb in the North East in me. Geordie Shaw. Why are you? I like a, I like a Jager bomb, to be fair. It's uh, it's definitely a, um, a shot I don't mind doing. Just gives you that kick and gets you pissed at the same time so you don't really know it's happening. It's good fun. Uh, I need to pull my mic over, don't I really? There we go. Might be able to hear me a bit better now. Um, good old Frosty Jacks. Uh, how have I not slipped that in a joke by now? So I've let you down. I let my family down. Most of all, I've let myself down. You have, Jack. You've let yourself down, mate. I expected more of you. I really did. Jack Frost from Fuller's would be better. Yeah, there you go. Jack Frost, that's a good beer, that. I reviewed that. I had a, I bought a keg of it just before Christmas. It was very nice, too. Very nice, too. Uh, Chris says, think after you make it big on YouTube, you should review champagne. I might do for a laugh on the back of my yacht. I'll do that. Um, I've also got a beer on the go. Um, <laughs> it's kind of loosely Scottish. It's not really. It's a Bellhaven 80 shilling. Obviously, it's more of a Green King beer. And I'll tell you what, it smells like a Green King beer. It smells like someone... Took a toke on a joint and blew it into the glass. It smelled awful. And it doesn't taste much better. Frosty Jack. I do actually have these little posh silver Turkish coffee spoons. Turkish? What's a Turkish coffee spoon look like when it's at home? Uh, I've got a lovely Pete of the Week 17-year-old whiskey from the Balveni. Only sip it on special occasions. <laughs> like waking up. Love that. That's a good reason. That's a good reason. 
I like that one. Jack's a bloody good shout, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Ziek goals on replay, to be honest. I'll be honest, though, the ref in the game on Sunday was shocking. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I thought we were robbed, personally, but I don't, I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference, but it, it would have made the game a little bit different at Spurs at the Tottenham goal stood. I thought it was soft. One side of me is like, wow, the referee got done. The other side of me is thinking, Thiago Silva, a bit of a genius, really, in that moment. They were both struggling to stop. Harry Kane put his hand out. Thiago Silva felt it and just threw himself on the floor. It was perfect, really, from his point of view. Bowman still loves the Southern Comfort. Yeah, I've never really got into Southern Comfort. Um, again, it's like a, a whiskey, whiskey sort of liqueur, isn't it, that one? Luke's laughing at Jack. Uh, Jack Fruity, like your good self. Is there any lager you would recommend, like Borsteiner or Kronbacher? I'd recommend both of them. Um, I think if I was pushed, I'd probably say I, I prefer Kronbacher slightly. Um, but Borsteiner and Kronbacher are both superb. I would recommend, but they're probably two of the best lagers you can pick up in the supermarket. Great beers. Really good. Um, so I think other good lagers you can get in a supermarket. Brooklyn Lager is still very, very good. You can get that in supermarkets. I know Tesco sell Brooklyn. You can get that. Um, that's a really good lager. What else is good? Uh, the Paulana Hells, you can get that in Tesco. That's a good one. Um, if you go out to Morrison's, you can get the Saltair Hells. That's very good. You can also get the Hofbrau. Their lager, that's very good. Um, what else do I like? Superbox a good one. Superbox a nice lager. That's quite drinkable. Uh, Captain Mick says, uh, went at home bargains and they're selling Sorkatuck beers. Got a milk stout, mango and pineapple pale ale and a blueberry stout. Going to have them all over the weekend. I've never heard of them. Never heard of them. Is that um, the American ones that everyone's picking up dirt cheap? Meant to be quite highly rated on Untapped, don't they? I'm sort of the ones I'm thinking about. I've never been to a home bargains. I don't. I don't know if we even have a home bargains around here. Uh, Jack, I'm a little finger out <clears throat> when I stir my lattes with a little questionable spoons. Uh, it's it's posh turkey spoons. Scrumpy Jack. Oh, I don't mind a bit of scrumpy Jack. I don't mind. I don't mind cider in general. Scrumpy Jack, the proper stuff. It's got to be the right. Um, it's got to be the right scenario. You've got to be on a beach in Cornwall in the summer to have Scrumpy Jack. Otherwise, it don't count. That's just my opinion, anyway. Hey, Icon Canadian is in. Hello, Paul and all the viewers. How are you doing, buddy? How are you? We're having a whiskey. It's Burns night, um, so we're celebrating. We've got drama scotch. So cheers to you, my friend. Hope you keep you well in Canada. Hope it's not too cold. Hope you can find your car. Um, you've got to be snowed done, don't you? His picture, he's, he's got his woolly hat on. It just looks cold in the picture. <laughs> David Wilson says, nice find, Captain. Wish I had a home bargains near me. Yeah, so I just, I just don't see him around here. I've never seen a home bargains. Uh, Jackie Charlton, Jackie Milburn, Jack Black. Truly are legend. <laughs> If you like, if you like, Dave says hello, Icon. Uh, Alex says, have you heard of a midwinter night's dram? It's expensive, but still meant to be nice. A midwinter night's dram. It rings a bell. It rings a bell. I couldn't tell you who distilled it, though. Who's, who's the distillery? A midwinter night's dram. It sounds like the sort of thing Johnny Walker would do. It says I'll get someone else to do the stirring, Jack. Barry is done. <laughs> 100% Silver's been playing for years, knows every trick in the book. Kane should have just played the game and the goal would have stood. I don't, I don't know. It was a weird one. It, it was it was an odd one. Thiago Silva done him completely, but um, I don't know. I, th I thought it was very soft. I thought it was very soft. I know Gary Neville said the same thing when the replays came up. He's like, it's never a foul. But the referee gave it. So what can you do? Kevin's in. Hello, Kevin. Good evening, my friend. 
Uh, Icon Canadian saying hello to David. Um, Alex says, I can't afford it, so I can't have it. It's a thing, whiskey so bloody expensive, isn't it? I can't afford it. I mean, this this one was uh, this one was a gift. This was a, a birthday present. Um, so I don't I don't actually very often go out and buy myself whiskey. So the only time I get a bottle of whiskey is it's a birthday or Christmas or something like that. It tends to be the only time a new bottle turns up. Um, but it's bloody pricey, isn't it? The good scotch costs you an arm and a leg. Uh, Jack getting jacked off ain't bad either. Uh, Jack is always a bit scrampy, Richie. Uh, I've seen Budvar, but wasn't sure to buy it or not. Budvar, how do I forget Budvar? Great beer. Bloody hell. <laughs> Completely forgot about Budvar. You can get that in um, Tesco as well. Um, I think it's the Saints we sell Budvar. Not too sure. I know Lidl sell Budvar. You can get Budvar in Lidl now. Great beer. Great beer. Rich says, uh, I'm partial to a Jameson. Uh, Two good old paddies. See, I don't mind a Jameson's. I don't mind Jameson's. I prefer um, Bushmills. I don't know if you ever tried that one, Richie. Bushmills Irish whiskey. Um, they do a ten-year-old, which is very nice. Very nice dram. Uh, Jack says, "Look, very good indeed." Bet that goes straight over most people's bald heads. Bald heads. I'm bald now. Uh, ACDC, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Stone sour version of Jason is very good. Oh, the stout, the stout, the yeah, the stout cask. Uh, Tom says, Hello, Tom. What you, hello, mate. This is uh, thoughts on Jack Daniel's apple. I, I enjoy Jack Daniel's apple for what it is, for what it is. It's tasty, and I'm on the the Glen Orangey uh, La Santa 12 year old. It's a sherry cask finish. This one, it's very nice too. Does have that. That little bit of sort of honey sweetness that you get from from a sherry in the cask. The cask influence is quite strong on this one, but it's very smooth. Oh, is it 43 43 percent? But it's very smooth. There's the burn, but it's 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 balanced. It's not OTT. It's got a nice balance. This whiskey. It's a nice scotch. Uh, Bitburger and Paulana, also good beers from supermarkets. I don't find Bitburger in supermarkets round that way either. I had to go to um, Majestic Wines to buy that. Majestic Wines are the only place that I know in uh, my neck of the woods to sell it, but it's a very good beer. Pearl and Bacca in Lidl. I've not had it for a while. I need to revisit that. Better than Khan and Foster's and the rest. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> Alex says, haven't had Scrumpy Jack in a while. Good memories with it, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, first time I ever tried Scrumpy, I was only a, I was only a little and my dad gave me some. I think I kind of liked it at the time, but it didn't agree with me. Pretty sure I was sick later on that night. Good times, though. Dave so says, uh, that version of Jameson. Yeah. You gotta love a woolly yet. Oh yeah, especially in this weather. Bloody freezing. Bloody freezing. Been out in it all day today. I don't think it got above three degrees all day. Bloody freezing. We've just been lucky. I don't know what the weather's been like where you are, but um it, January's been freezing, but it's been dry. We've had generally really good weather, but it's been cold all month. Whereas December was mild and wet. It didn't stop raining all over Christmas, all over December. It didn't stop raining, whereas January's just been dry but freezing cold. If we'd have had the weather, we'd have temperatures, we'd probably be covered in a few feet of snow. But um, I'm glad. Snow snow looks nice. It's all right if you've got nothing to do. But um, otherwise, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, Barry is that almost as good as a legendary egg joke. I'm struggling to remember, but I forget how fucking great it was. <coughs> Must have been good. He forgot it. Uh, what do you think about vinyl coming back and trending? So many people started vinyl collections again. It does seem to be coming back, doesn't it? Me, I've never had a record player, so um, yeah, I don't, I don't personally get the fad. Um, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never. I mean, my my dad had a record player. He used to listen to records when I was younger, but he always said that the CD sounded better. So I don't, I don't know when when people turn around and say, oh. You know, vinyl sounds better than downloads and it sounds better than CDs. I'm kind of thinking, well, how? You know, surely the CD was 
meant to be the progression from record. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think it might be a bit of a fad, but without comparing, you know, the vinyl sound of an album to a CD or digital download right next to it, I, I, I wouldn't like to say. And what about you, Tom? What do you think? It, it, it's a money spinner, isn't it? Because they're not cheap either. You buy a, what, a, a vinyl album, it's about 30 quid, isn't it? You know? What's everyone else's thoughts on that? Anyone anyone a vinyl collector? Who, who can swear that, that vinyl sounds better than than CDs and digital downloads? I'd be intrigued. If if people swear that it sounds better, I would I would be interested in investing and in getting a half decent record player. But they're pricey again. The records are pricey. Jim, hello, hello, laddies. How are you, buddy? How you doing? Are you drinking? Are you having a tipple? Are you having a tipple? Luke's laughing at Jack Howard. Uh, a midwinter night's dram sounds like a play. Yeah, mid, mid was it mid, midsummer's night dream? That's what it is, isn't it? Uh, Paul, what beer places do you want to visit 2022? What about we all do a trip to Germany in October? Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. That's um, that's on my bucket list. I've got really itchy head. I've had a woolly out on all day. It's the first time I've kind of let my hair all stand up. All my hair. Um, I'd love to go Oktoberfest. Um, I'd love to go to Germany during Oktoberfest season. I don't think I necessarily want to go to an Oktoberfest festival, but I'd want to go to some of the beer houses during that time of the year just to try their Oktoberfest beers um, as good as they are, can be, you know. Um, places I want to go this year, I want to go down to Cornwall. I want to go to the Verdant Tap Room that's recently opened. I want to go there. And have a few beers there. I really fancy that this year. Um, I want to go. I want to go to York. I want to go drinking in York this year. Um, I quite fancy Manchester as well. Manchester's got a really good beer scene at the moment. I wanted to do Leeds last year. Got it done twice. Love Leeds. Great drinking city. I'll drink there any day of the week. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Verdon down in Cornwall. I really want to get to. Bristol's another one. I'd like to get to Bristol, um, do some places in Bristol. Some of my favourite breweries are down there. Um, yeah, Cornwall for Verdant, Bristol for Arbour and New Bristol and uh, Manchester. Leeds again, York. There's, there's a lot of places I'd love to go drinking. Um, I'm, I'm possibly, hopefully, going to America at the end of the year. Um, probably going to be on the East Coast. So I want to get a lot of drinking done on the East Coast in of America later in the year. But um, if it doesn't happen, um, yeah, there are a few places in the UK where you want to go drinking at the moment. Midwinter Night's Dram. It's by High West Distillery. High West Distillery. I'm not sure I've ever heard of them. Minus 18 tomorrow afternoon. Minus 28 tomorrow night. Yikes. Possibility of snowstorm on Saturday. Goodness me. <coughs> I'm moaning because it's like two, three degrees out there. <laughs> You've got minus 28. That's another world, man. I bet your heating, your heating bill crazy this time of year. How'd you cope? How'd you cope with those kind of, kind of temperatures? That's crazy. Um, getting jacked off new JD brand. I've never heard of that. Never heard of it. Jacked off. As the sales Bonval. There you go. You can get it in Asda as well. Uh, thinking about a box of Paulana Vice Beer. Any other ones that are better? Um, I prefer Francis Carner. I, I think their Vizen. Um, I prefer their Vizen to the Paulana. And I like the Paulana Vizen. Don't get me wrong. It's a lovely Vice Beer. Um, but Francis Carner for me is a bit better. Um if you can get one from Iinga as well, um, or Ainga, not sure the pronunciation, spell A Y I N G E R. The Iinga Vison is stunning if you can get hold of that one. Um, but you can get Francis Carna, um, Sainsbury's, definitely. I think you might be able to get it in MS as well. I might be wrong. Sainsbury's, you can definitely get Francis Carner. That that's my favourite sort of readily available Vison. Um, but the, the Paul Arner one's decent. The Paul Arner one's decent though. It's worth a go. Let me know what you think. Like so they're all they're all kind of G 
generally you know where you stand with the Weizen, but there are some breweries that mix it up a little bit, like the um, the Erdinger, for example. I find that slightly more spicy, a more more savoury type of Weizen. Um, Paul Lahn is definitely more in the middle ground. It's quite strong with the spice and the cloves, and the banana is quite strong on the flavour. Captain Meat Pilsner Urkel is amazing. Personal Pilsner Urkel is amazing. That's another one you can get in Tesco, as far as I'm aware. Another banger, the original. Uh, Montreal, Montreal, Canada. They speak a lot. Do you get a lot of French people in in Montreal? It's a quite a, quite a large French contingent in that part of Canada. Uh, Alex has not seen a snowstorm in years. Uh, we haven't. Had, I haven't seen snow for a couple of years now. It was. Um, we didn't get. We didn't get any last winter. And it was, yeah, it must have been, I don't know, tell a lie, tell a lie. We had some snow last January, only for a couple of days, and then it, it buggered off, and that was it. But we never get a lot, do we, really, over here? Uh, Kim and W, hard to get better than Paul Arna without ordering online. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good bison. Uh, look like a bottle of vinegar, that bottle. <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? A nice tall, tall bottle of vinegar. Put that on my chips. Beautiful. Big bottle of sarsens. Uh, have you tried the new Guinness Lager? Uh, they bought it out to replace Hop House 13 in the UK. Is that the Rockshaw? The Rockshaw one. Again, I think Tesco sold that one. Not, not tried it yet though. Not tried it. Uh, when is Boris resigning? Game over for him. Party after party after. Turn. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have um I've, I've had i've had debates about this in the last couple of weeks since it all came out that they were busy having social gatherings whilst trying to tell us not to do that um they all need to go not not just boris i know boris is the spokesperson and he's the face of, of government right but they're all they're all as guilty as he is you know they're, they're all got their own minds they could have done what they wanted they could have said no um the thing is things my, my my opinion is if it wasn't boris and it wasn't the conservative party it would have been the labor party and they're idiots they would have done the same thing because they're idiots they're mps they're so far disconnected from reality they've got so much power that they genuinely think they can do whatever they want it's one rule for them and another for everyone else and it's that's my opinion on it i don't trust a single one of them um if Boris were to, were to resign, I would totally understand it. I think his position, as it is, is probably untenable. I don't see how he can stay in the job and expect people to kind of believe a word he says. Not that you should believe a word a politician says anyway, but yeah, I, I think he needs to go. I think he needs to go. And um, But who do you bring in? Because they're all just as stupid as, as the next one, you know? Pills no curls class, yep. Paul's wobbling the bed soon. The passage gets thinner. <laughs> what? Uh, lovely drop of sarsens. Oh, yeah. Lovely drop of sarsens. Usually I drink just on the weekend. Maybe one or two on a Wednesday. Ended up drinking whiskey tonight. Good man, Tom. Good man. Uh, what the heck is that? Perta, Shimalawa pills and Wankra. Have you just made those up? <laughs> good Polish shops are worth a go. Uh, everyone has a good memory. Everyone has a good memory with a Jack. There you go. Uh, is snow a good beer? It's Chinese, I think. I've never had it. Snow beer? Never had it. It's got some good reviews, apparently. I'm going to have to look for that one. Chinese beer, snow. I do, especially these in a bowls club. One degrees to four, mainly up here. Showers, but mainly dry. Yeah. So we're lucky. The weather's okay. Kill date, Ill Corv. I'm becoming a bit of a Paul Arna fan. Yeah, good brewery. Their Oktoberfest beer. Top notch. Top notch. Uh, I remember a bloke who used to balance cars on his head. I'm sure his name was Jack. Had to be Jack. Uh, if we'd had the weather, we'd have three footer stuff. What the hell is that to me? <laughs> He's mucking me off from my weather forecast now. 
Can't win with this geezer. Cannot win. All I'm saying, with the temperatures we've had, if we've had a band of rain come over, it would have turned to snow, wouldn't it? It would have had a bit of it. My granddad gave me a sip of lager when I was uh, little, expecting me to hate it. He called it mucky beer. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Probably the cheap stuff. Um, Mr. Beamer. Hello, Mr. Beamer. I said, your vids are awesome, mate. Keep up your awesome work. Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. Jack's laughing at Bramall. Uh, Alex has turned out great. Uh, got to go. What's that? Got to, what's that? Got, got to go. A debt tomorrow from Walker. Not a nice place at all. It's rough as as crack. Uh, Bramall Backroom Brewery. Laughing at him. The only thing with vinyl is the price of the vinyl. It's even start at twenty five quid. I look amazing, but I stream music. I, I'm the same. I, I, I've got Apple Music. So I'll pay for that every month. And obviously you can listen to as many albums as you want. And, you know, $9.99 a month, I don't think that's too bad. And you listen to, I listen to a lot of music at work and things like that. So I've always got it on. Um, but I do like listening to music at home, you know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never, I've never quite, I'm never, I'm not sure if vinyl is the way to go or not, you know. Uh, quite like vinyls coming back, but prefer the vintage in good condition vinyls rather than new ones. <laughs> yeah, they're probably worth a bit more as well, weren't they? But again, is is, is that debate? What is it, is it, you know is it worth it? No bad thing. You've written a vice. Uh, consider Hacker Shaw, Via Stefana, Meisel's elite tier for me. Yeah, Via Stefana's nice as well. Rough, rougher than a vodka hangover. Uh, got dice straights have been shot from 84. Works awesome. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. 84. What album did they bring out in 84? Obviously, the first one came out in 79, didn't it? Jimbo Cop. Get to the portal. Join me in the future. <laughs> I love vinyl. I have a huge selection, uh, collection, sorry. Uh, lots of vinyl, picture discs, made in Sabbath, Aussie. The list goes on. It sounds like a proper collection. Proper collection. Uh, my son had delivered the other day vinyl imported from the USA. Ooh. He doesn't have a turntable. <laughs> He's got nothing to play it on. Goodness me. I think it's, just, it's a thing, isn't it? It's a thing to have. It's, someone says it's cool and people have got to do it, haven't they? Uh, vinyl seems a lot of effort, not going to lie, each to their own. Uh, too cool, I've simply read an ABBA, apparently. Blimey. I, never got into ABBA. I think simply read have done a couple of bangers over the years, but uh, yeah, not so much into ABBA. Lots of money to be made in vinyl if you can get down to a car boot and pick them up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you find some old vinyls, they'll be worth a bloody fortune. You know uh, I'm jealous how much uh, head hair Paul has. You are a cheeky get rich. I'll smack your legs when I see you. Octoberfest is unbelievable. Went just before COVID hit. Can't remember a thing. <laughs> Germany, Italy, Spain, fantastic countries. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never been to Italy. Been to Spain a few times. Always enjoyed Spain. But uh, I, I do fancy doing some uh, some proper drinking in Germany, definitely. Uh, Rich says, I'm drinking in uh, York, the end of February. Nice. Uh, went to my uh, went to York for my gold, my birthday. Golden Fleece is nice. Golden Fleece. I have to remember that one. I have to remember that. Corvo. Speak the country, Paul. What is your favourite city? Mine's Amsterdam. Um, my favourite city. I mean, the one I go to the most regularly, apart from apart from home, is, is Madrid. Um, been to Madrid quite a few times and I, I like it. I love that sort of mixture of um, historic culture, the Spanish culture that runs through Madrid and at the same time, it's got that modern capital city vibe as well. It's, um, yeah, I, I enjoy Madrid, I guess. I've not, not, not been to too many, to be fair. But, um, yeah, I do like Madrid. Amsterdam, I was supposed to go to Amsterdam. 
like last year, the year before from my stag do, but that all got to, that all got postponed, obviously. So um, I've got to get to Amsterdam. Uh, would you come to New Zealand and go to Slate's Tour, my favourite beer? I'd love to go to New Zealand. One of these days. One of these days. And if I do go there, I'll drink everything they got to offer. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to file a complaint about the location of the well. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Jack's on form. No doubt the UK will see snow soon. Yeah, still early days, in it? We've not even got to the end of January yet. Um, Verdant have a share tap room in Hackney with pressure drop. There you go. So it's a closer one. But, um, yeah, I do fancy going down to their new one, down in Cornwall. Just a good excuse to go to Cornwall. I love Cornwall. Bam, she picked up a can of putty. Oh, he's got one. £8.50. Raw, goodness me. Is that much of charging for it? £8.50. We'll put a review up soon. Also, I want to see if I can brew my own interpretation. I've never had it. I've never had putty. And they bring it out early, early in the year, don't they? They're bringing out a, um, is it a pale box set tomorrow, tomorrow morning? Um, I want to get one because it's got, it's got this in it, which was my beer of the year last year. The people, money, space and time. That is a brewing masterpiece. It was a 3.8% pale ale. But it, it, it tasted like it could have been a massive double juicy IPA. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, Verdant are dropping a, a release tomorrow at half past 10. And that's in it. I want some more. So um, yeah, but yeah, let's know where it is. 8, 8 is a lot, isn't it? That's, that's an expensive beer. Definitely 100% undoubtedly move Icon Canadian. <laughs> I couldn't find station in York last time. There after a session, missed the last train home. Must have been good. Must have been good. And it's a jacked off. That was my thoughts when I heard that. Jacked off, what is that? Um, which is, sorry, nothing beats Blue Moon for me for a good drop of beer. I like Blue Moon. I like Blue Moon. It's good beer. It's yeah, it's it's not well beaten. It's not it's not the most amazing beer you'll ever drink, but it's um it's just drinkable. It's just drinkable. What the fuck is that? Exactly. Uh Aldi is selling six three hundred and thirty mil cans of Warney for a fiver. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad. I don't think I've had it in a can. It's definitely not going to Aldi, I think. Don't go off in that out here, Alex. <laughs> it wasn't jacking enough. Uh, what's your thoughts on Heineken? Uh, yeah, I like Heineken as well. I've got no issues with Heineken at all. Um, from a can, it's better if you can get it. Bottled Heineken's not the best, but canned Heineken's fine. And if you can get it in a keg, do it. It's good beer. It's good beer. Uh, Tom's laughing. Luke says, uh, but do you like it that much that you can't? Five hundred. <laughs> I wondered how long that would cut. That was funny, wasn't it? That was that was the funniest bit of the documentary for me. When he found out he had that much investment, he had all that shares in Heineken. What a knob, you know. Uh, I may have to give Francis Garner a try. Sadly, Hackney was all sold out of putty, I bet. It's, it's like the ultimate... Um, it's the ultimate hype beer, isn't it, Putty? They bring it out at the beginning of the year and everyone goes absolutely apeshit for it. And um, I heard that Verdant sold out of it in four hours or something. you think they'd brew a bit more, wouldn't you? They hype it up and then it's gone like that. I, just, I always think that's a bit daft. Paul absolutely loves talking about the weather. <laughs> I love it. It's my favourite thing. It's worse than John talking about cars. You get, ah, John, when he starts talking about cars, goodness me. Uh, weird, though, because it always used to snow around the winter in the UK. I read, you speak to old people, and they always say these things go in cycles. You'll get, like, winters where it'll snow. Loads and loads of snow, and then it won't happen for a while. And then you'll get another round of winters where you get snow. It just, I don't know. It just, it seems like we've never had 
prolific snow in the winter. It's like every other year you'll get a good snow for one in. Nothing much to write home about, but it's a pain in the ass now. You're right on Paul. 79% French. Wow. God, I didn't know it was I didn't know it was that uh, that highly populated with French. Do you speak it yourself? I speak a tiny bit of French. That was the only one I could be bothered with at school. Uh, I hate Hop House 13, not for me. Yeah, I was never a fan. I, I had it. The first time I had it was when it, it first came out and it went on tap in a lot of the pubs around my way. They really pushed it, didn't they? Hop House 13. I never thought it was great. Um, better off sticking to the dark stuff to see. But I, I'd be interested to see what Rockshaw's like. Um, I watched Simon's review a bit the other day. And I think he he suggested it, it wasn't as good as Hot House 13, which ain't great, really. Uh, Paulana Munch in the Hell is amazing. Um, on Keg, it's really good. I, I prefer I prefer Paulana's Vison to their Hell, if I'm honest. Um, the Hell is on Keg is awesome. On Bottle, I just feel like it misses something. I feel like it's missing something. Whenever I've had it from a bottle... I always feel like it's a little bit, it's a little bit lacking. It's a little bit thin. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else has had that. Um, but you get a keg of it. Oh, mind blowing. After drinking both Hop House 13, it's better than Rockshaw. There you go. Captain Meats confirmed it as well. Uh, there'll be no offerings of sausage smash in here, says Alex. <laughs> Is it true that it's permissible to poop in public on sidewalks in Canada? That is the question. That is the question. Boris is having a party now. He's investigating whether a woman got sacked from conservatives for being Muslims. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Do we believe that? We're not allowed to talk foul of them, are we? Surely not. Surely not. I, I just feel like <sighs> the media are after him now, aren't they? They found out he's done a couple of things wrong. He should have taken responsibility for it. Now they're on him for everything. They got the they got the momentum. Paul for prime minister. Now that is a thought. Uh, they they won't. They don't. They don't. They don't, let, they don't let people like you and me in houses of parliament because we know what. What real life is like. They don't, they don't want people like us on TV telling it like it is because that's not what a politician's job is. A politician's job is to try and convince everyone that everything's okay and that all that everything they're doing is makes sense. When in reality, it doesn't. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And that's the way they want it. I wouldn't be. A, I couldn't be a prime minister. I'm too honest. The problem with MPs is the internet, social media. They, they can't get away with anything, and nor should they. I could say that the whole throwing parties thing, they're meant to be, they're meant to set an example, aren't they? You know, if they're telling people, do this for your own safety, stay indoors, look after your families, look after yourselves. And then they go and throw parties. It's like, you're meant to set an example. You're meant to be leading the country. So it's like, everyone bashing Boris, if you want to do that, that's fine. But don't think for a second that any other MP would have acted any differently. They'd have all done it, given the opportunity. That That's my issue. They're all scumbags. They're, they're all so disconnected from reality. But they're in a position of power. It's a bit like the whole James Watt thing yesterday. If all the accusations that have been levelled at the guy are true, it's because he can do what he wants. You know, they're, they're disconnected from reality. That They're not fit to run the country, these people. These people that are elected aren't fit to do it. But we don't, we don't have a choice. We have a very piss poor limited choice of who to bring in and i don't i don't vote personally because i don't trust a single one of them you know he needs to go says alex there you go uh the country has and always will be uh run by pillocks that's what mp stands for minute relating pillocks yeah was it um who was it who said it Someone said, if, if voting made any difference, they wouldn't let you do it. I can't remember who said that now. Famous saying, if voting made any difference, they wouldn't let us do it. And it's true. Nothing changes. New people come in, they make promises. They don't They don't hold up to them. It's nonsense. 
uh, I would rather uh, I would rather Jack Jack them Fleetwood Mac. Uh, what? <laughs> I would rather Jack them Fleetwood Mac. Uh, then again, Keir Starker had drinks with people he shouldn't have. Of course he did. Of course he did. Uh, the night our Queen laid her husband of over 60 years to rest, sat on her own in that church. Her MPs were on a jolly. Oh, no way. I know lots of people went, went through similar stuff, but that symbolises, wow, the utter lack of respect they have for anyone. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They couldn't, they couldn't give a toss. They couldn't give a toss about you or me. If, if anyone believes that any MP actually gives a monkeys about the betterment of our lives... You're deluded. They're in it for the money. They're in it to lie in their own pockets. You get people that were president and prime ministers and presidents 20 years ago, and they're still making millions by standing up and doing speeches at conferences and rich people's meetings and things like that. They, they never they never go without these people. You know, they get chauffeur driven all over the place. You don't see them at McDonald's. You know, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue. They're not fit to run the country, these people. None of them. Here, here, Jack. Uh, Paul, the fancy boiler maker. Is that where you just literally drop a whiskey into a beer? A boiler maker. I've never done it. Always fancied it though. Um, what do you, you do? How, how would you do it, Jim? Would you just drop like a Jack Daniels in a in a Budweiser, the most American boiler maker ever? How would you do a boiler maker? Uh, what do you call Donna Duck in a checkered shirt? Lamber crack. Way straight in there. Uh, don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. Thank you, Captain Mick. <laughs> Um, 33 of you in the boozer, welcome, welcome along. If you've not subscribed to the channel, do consider it. I talk about some waffle and drink beers mostly. So, if that sounds like your sort of thing, get involved. You're most welcome. Uh, Luke says, This weather reminds me of summer holidays. <laughs> Where did you grow up? Evening, Ginger Ninja. Mark Jones is in LA, mate. Having a cheeky Ravenna from Thornbridge. Not bad, not heard of that one. Ravenna, what's what is it? What is it, Mark? What style is it? I am drinking, um, well, I say I'm drinking. I'm sipping on this 80 shilling from Bellhaven. But it's a Green King. And it's poo. But it's wetting me a whistle, so. Look at the state of it. No life in that whatsoever. Puddle of piss. Um, Jack and much respect to the royal family for the way they handled the funeral. Showed respect in class. Yeah. What were my thoughts on the royals? I've got time for the royal family. Most of them anyway. Most of them seem all right. Mark says, love vinyl. Scratched a few. Oh, yeah. Never thought I'd see the day I'm actually enjoying whiskey more than rum. I don't mind a rum. Don't mind the rum either, but whiskey's uh, whiskey's definitely my go-to. It's definitely my go-to spirit. Oi, oi, Joey's in. We're in trouble now. Yo! Hey then, Joey. How are you, sir? Happy Burns Night to you. I'll raise a toast. Raise a toast? Raise a drink to Joey. I'm not making any sense. Exactly, David. The tea and morals this great country was built upon. Not them sack of useless shits in Parliament. Everything should be done on a democratic vote. Parliament lives in the dark ages. Yeah. I mean, it's borderline. It's borderline dictatorship. The way we're living these days, to be honest. I'm, I'm not going to try and compare us to other countries or anything, and how bad the people over in certain places get it, but they're trying. They're trying to take away as many rights from us as they possibly can. The last couple of years, it's really escalated. Um... No, I'll save it for another time. Uh, I don't know, man. Got some blue blueberry raspberry jolly ranches, American sweets, dissolved them into vodka. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Hey, Brad's in. How you doing, Bradders? How are you, sir? How are you getting on? The new dad? She must be, what, two weeks now, the little girl? Two weeks old? Flying by, that is. Uh, if you love Amsterdam, you will love the weed in the States. There you go. There you go. He's talking big statements there. If you like to see it in Amsterdam, we'd love it in the States. Uh, time for a Mortlack, 15-year-old. Or the Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones edition. 
Nice. I've seen them. There's been loads of Game of Thrones whiskey come out, haven't they? Loads of them. Uh, I have some original Judge Dread yellow label vinyl. Don't collect them. Uh, got them as a gift off my boss because he knew Dread was my family. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm going to be saying. Nice, man. Uh, hey, up, Brad Ad. B Mus is uh, sorry what I miss. I'm in hospital. You're in hospital. What's, what's up with you, Mr. Beamer? Beamer? What's up with you? Brad says, hey, then, Luke. Uh, cycle all the way to the source of the Ryan soon. Rotter down to Andermatt. Going to try a few German beers along the way. Oh, be rude not to. That sounds awesome, Kevin. That sounds awesome. Uh, evening all. A right nice pint. Hello, mate. How you doing? How are you? Uh, hi, Brad. Dad. Jim. Joey, are you happy about the Bengals? Wow. That's that's a story, isn't it? Cincinnati Bengals making the semi-finals. Um, wasn't it literally two years ago they were like the lowest place side in the NFL? That's what I, that is what I do like about the NFL. It's always so balanced. You never really know where it's going to go. You have informed teams, but the lowest ranked sides always get that opportunity to build themselves up because they get like the first picks in the draft, don't they? Whereas over here, unless you're loaded, you're never going to win anything. That's kind of how it works, sport over here. There's a there's a division already. But in our top tier of football, you've got Manchester City, you've got Liverpool, you've got Chelsea. And then it's like the rest of the league is just kind of looking up at them. It's a bit embarrassing, really. The competition's piss poor. But um, that's one thing the NFL do properly. They help out the teams that are struggling. And then you get a story like the Cincinnati Bengals, where they're in the semis, could make it to the Super Bowl. It's mental. Chris says, whoa, you don't like ABBA? Ah, oh, mate, I do like a bit of ABBA. Proper group, proper music. Never liked ABBA. Never got into them. Not my cup of tea. Uh, yes, Paul, go to Amsterdam. You do Paul's Ganja reviews. <laughs> I'd have to. I'd have to do some stuff out there. It'd be great. It would be great. Do loads of recording. Might get in trouble, but it'd be fun, though. Uh, I'd love to visit Italy, Egypt again, and Barbados. Oh, yeah, Barbados. Wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, would you come to New Zealand? It costs an absolute fortune, but I, w I wouldn't mind going to New Zealand. It looks beautiful. I do fancy New Zealand, though. Uh, Jack, oi, oi, brothers. Uh, I'm happy for them, but also as a diehard Browns fan. Don't care overall for the Bengals. Exactly. Exactly. You can't you can't really care, can you? You can't really care for other teams. You know, it's nice to see an underdog do well, but at the same time it's like you know. Who do we who do you reckon then? Who do you reckon who's gonna win a Super Bowl? Who's got it? Luke says not bad, Brad. Sinking his whiskey's a little too easy. Lincoln Clay, Paul, what time do you usually go to bed and what and wake up? Oof. I usually, I'm usually up by about seven, half seven. And it's pretty rare I go to bed before 12, to be honest with you. Um, is that the Madagascar stout you're drinking? Definitely not. Definitely not, no. Always talk of vinyl. The amount of people in chat digging through the attic. <laughs> if I was trying to find the old records. Love it. Uh, Jack Goward. You are a slag. Uh, not a stalking question at all, Luke, mate. <laughs> uh, David, you know, David, how you doing, buddy? How are you, sir? Hope you're well. Uh, Mr. Beamer, born the animal. Lol. Uh, Abba and Aha are the only bands with uh, palindromic names that have ever had a number one hit. Oh, there you go. Uh, Boris. Wild Boars. Couldn't find a station in York. It's massive. Good night then. Must have been. You couldn't find it and it was that big. Uh, I don't mind being stalked, Jack. I had Mark uh, Googling me on the live stream at the week. <laughs> He's been stalked. Been stalked by Mark. Uh, Dave's got some Glenfiddich 18 year old on the go. Oh, nice. Nice. Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you. Mm. That goes down too easy. Uh, let's say David Longstaff, nice. 18 year old's got to be good, isn't it? 
Might start up my own beer company. Slag Lager or Schlager. What's your thoughts? Slager are great. That's a great name. That's a great name. It's better than Skinny Lager, isn't it? Better than that name. Uh, Jack says, um, I'm the same, Luke. Find it very flattering. If I was there, I'd have a stalker, that is. Uh, thanks. You are the best. Thank you. Uh, uh, never knew John like Carl, to be honest, until I went into a stream of him. A massive hat and weird glasses watching America's dry cut. <laughs> he loves it, does John. He loves it. Uh, oh, hello. We've got a new member. We've got a new member to come up. Uh, Paul Goggin. Thank you very much, man. Paul Goggin has just joined the Viking Horde. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very, very much, man. Appreciate that. That's awesome. That is awesome. Really appreciate that. Um, where was I? God, I need to catch up with this, I? I didn't think there'd be that many people in there. <laughs> Uh, I still want to try Broken Skull IPA. Oh, yeah, Broken Skull IPA is a good beer. The cream egg style was shite. Uh, Luke Job Frost, don't ask uh, John about Bitcoin. He'll only tell you. Uh, Jack Howard, you silky, silky man. You, to be fair, I Googled myself weekly just to see the shit I've come out of here. <laughs> uh, my missus is French. Her family are wine growers in the uh, Beaujolais. Oh, I'll get a good supply of wine. Oh, nice. That can't be bad, can it? Did I just pronounce that properly? The Boujolet? Boujolet? I reckon a few may Google my name on here. Catch me if you can. He's on the run, Jack. He's on the run. You Google him. He's got a, a sketchy past, that lad. I'm telling you now. Luke said, too much fruit for me, Kevin. Uh, in regards to the government, all parties are shambles, to be honest. I am a Labour supporter, but even that star is a mess. Would crumble under pressure him. I think they all would. They, they, they want it easy, don't they? It's uh, it's a bit like the, the referendum, you know. We had a prime minister in David Cameron who was pro leaving the European Union, said that we'd thrive, it wouldn't be a bad thing, and you know, we needed to have more faith in English industry and English, English future and all that. And then he went to he went to Brussels. Um, to negotiate the new deal. And within days, he was saying that we couldn't leave the European Union the European Union under any circumstances. So he'd, he'd basically been told what to say. He changed the tune overnight. And then as soon as the result came in, what did he do? He ran. He resigned. Coward. That's not, that's not a leader. That's not someone who's capable of running a country. That's a, that's a coward who had been told what to do, what to say, ignore the, the people. And when the result came in that the government didn't want, he did a runner. That's that is a disgrace. But that's what MPs are. You know, they don't want to do any work. They just want the paycheck, you know. That's my opinion anyway. Uh, I found you under column. <laughs> but you could be uh, PM Paul's beer reviews. Also known as PM Paul. PM Paul. There's a lot of P's there. Hi, Chris. How's your day going? Not bad, mate. How's your beamer? Uh, you would think MPs were learned after the Duck House expenses scandal. The Duck House. That's a new one on me. If you look up Suffolk Chris Hemsworth look like you'll find me. <laughs> uh, Paul Glee hasn't Googled me. There's a good thing in the scheme of things. I've, I've never even Googled myself, let alone Jack Howard. I, 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 the, the thought of what I might find Terrifies me. Terrifies me. Phil Mitchell for Prime Minister 2022. There you go. Reasons they are disconnected from reality is because the majority of them haven't had to struggle and go through what some of the countries had to. Most of them have been gifted opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't know what real life is, so, you know, how can they run it? Look, can you stop flirting with Jack? Starting to get jealous. Or gellious. Uh, a good Christmas. I mean, that's all because of illness. Jack is my favourite beer guy, and it helps my pain watching his vids. <laughs> uh, I haven't had to work for it, all a bunch of scumbags. Anyway, so I'm saying at the moment, I don't care, so I should be. Exactly. Exactly. They'll, they'll all want our votes a few months down the line as well. That's the funny thing. They'll all come knocking on doors and whacking things through our letterboxes and that, saying, come vote for us. And what are we supposed to say? 
It's like, yeah, I'll vote for you. You'll definitely do what you say you're going to do. That mandate you've got in your hand means everything. It's like, fuck off. So, I mean, have a laugh. Uh, sorry about Dad, I'm not the father in type. Oh, the only politics I trust now is Nigel Farage. He's not even in politics anymore. His YouTube channel is fantastic. Has he got a YouTube channel? Eesh. Always has a good track record of producing kids. <laughs> So he has got a good track record of taking out Chinese kids while playing rugby. Do you ever see that footage of him taking out that little lad? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. That's the best thing he's ever done. He flattened him. He was not messing around. Went straight through him. Uh, it's worse that Boris and his mings made the rules up and broke every one of them. You have to feel sorry for all the families that love... Oh, exactly. Exactly. This They should never be allowed to forget that. They should never be allowed to forget that. Telling us what we could or couldn't do and then they went and did what they wanted to do. You know, that that's unforgivable. That's completely unforgivable. You know. Um, but yeah, what, what do you do? What do you do? Is he going to resign? You know, who replaces him? It's like we, what we need is a, is a list of every single politician that was there at these parties. A list. We should have that. That, that should be public information. We should have the right to that information. At the end of the day, they work for us. It's not the other way around. They work for us, you know, so we should have access to that information. So we need to know who was at those parties, who was dis disregarding the rules and taking the piss out of us so that we should know they're not fit to be in Parliament. That, you know, that's what they should do, but they won't. They won't do that. Shot and glass is kind of a boilermaker. Yeah, everyone hit the like button. Oh, yeah, give it a thumbs up. If you've not done it already, do appreciate it. Give it a big fat thumbs up. We've got 32 of you in a boozer. So if we can get like 32 likes, that'd be awesome. Uh, bad boy, nice guy. Yeah, buddy. Hey there, mate. How are you? Uh, but you end up swallowing the shot glass and end up choking until you shit yourself. <laughs> yeah, good bombs are a bit like that, weren't they? You get them glasses that are designed with the plastic thing built into it now, don't you? Back in the day, you used to drop, you just drop the Jaeger shot into your Red Bull. And you do that, and the shot glass will fly back, smack you in the teeth. Good times, good times. Uh, it's a hazy mosaic IPA, four and a half percent. Ooh, sounds all right. From Thornbridge, Royal Family ain't for me. I get why they're loved and whatever else, but in terms of the wrong ones involved with them, I dislike the Royal Family to be honest. Yeah, I, I quite like the fact we have a Royal Family. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fan as such, but I, I do like the fact that we have one. You know. Um, <laughs> it's just the history involved. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a, an island with a more celebrated history than what we have here in Britain. And I think that's something that we should be proud of, you know, for for good or bad or worse, or good or worse, should I say? Um, I'm not really sure what I'm talking about at this stage, but I, I quite like the fact that we have a royal family, personally. Uh, I've got time for the royal family, apart from that ginger winger. And his, and his wife, even though she's fit as. <laughs> I love that. She is tidy, though, isn't she, Meghan Markle? To be fair, William's uh, William's punching as well, isn't he? Kate, she's gorgeous. Uh, Favourite rum at the moment is uh, Yarn Distillery Spiced Pineapple Rum. That sounds all right. Oh, hello. We've got a super chat. Mark Jones, Boom. Hello, mate. In what other walk of life do you change your your job description, as in a reshuffle, a health secretary to defence minister? It, it, uh, so true, though, isn't it? Makes no sense. It's like, how are you qualified? How are you qualified to do that? There's like, I, I'm not. So why doesn't someone just say, well, you can't do it then? They just give people jobs, don't they? they just sorry, they just move it around. It, it makes no sense. Absolutely makes no sense. Our government are an absolute joke. Absolute joke. Ah, oh, dear. That's a great example, though, Mark. Absolutely spot on. Uh, I love the rules, apart from the ones that touch kids. <laughs> the less said about them, the better. Eh? Ah. Alex is laughing. Uh, the problem is our parliamentary system. Politicians have a cartel monopoly over seats with a 10,000 majority. Dishonest, they don't care. We need a modernised democratic system. I'm with you. I'm with you. If they can, if they can give us something new, that's a little bit more transparent, a little bit more for the people. I'll be front of the queue because at the moment, what we've got is piss poor, 
And I just think the last couple of years, everything that we've had to deal with has exposed each and every single one of them. It's it's almost... Um, I mean, I mean, I think most people knew that MPs are bent anyway, but you were kind of hoping that something like this wouldn't come up. But are we surprised? Are we surprised that the MPs have been throwing parties? Are we surprised? I'm not. I'm not surprised. Uh, we were told to never mention that day at Pizza Express ever again. <laughs> well, he, didn't he say something about he doesn't sweat or something like that when he was interviewed about it? So I don't sweat, I can't sweat or something. He proper come out with the most random answers when he was grilled, didn't he? He's, uh, <sighs> sounds like he could be in a fair old spot of bother. We shall see. We shall see. I wonder if we'll get protected. I wonder if we'll get away with everything. If it's all true, you never know. Can't wait to see Boris getting arrested at Prince Andrew in court and make good watch alongs. <laughs> we'll do some live streams. Uh, Mr. Beamer, get well soon. Hope you're not in the hospital for too long. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, Jack, have you seen a video of some guy hanging out in Buckingham Palace butt naked on the curtain trying to escape the royals? <laughs> Uh, I'm oblivious to any news about politics. So I go straight to football news before I catch a glimpse of anything political. Yeah, I'm on the same. It's only stuff you turn on the radio and they do like a news bullet and you're like, oh God, what have they done now? You know, other time people don't vote for who they like. They vote for who they dislike the least or they don't vote at all. This isn't a democracy. It's an absolute shambles of a democratic system. Uh, when a royal is anywhere near a pizza place, you know that he's there to scoop up a few poor, unprivileged kids to whisk away to the island. Oh, my God. Uh, dear. Although I wish I avoided the football news today, just learned that Roy Hodgson's our new manager. Uh, has he got the job now? Is that confirmed? Roy Hodgson's new Watford manager. He can't stay away from the game for too long, can he, Roy? Uh, the weed in the States is ridiculous. I smoked half a blunt with my pal in Brooklyn, didn't know what anything was for seven hours. Asked my wife how I was dreaming about being in New York. Excuse me. Me to Chris, hope you're doing well with COVID. Going home today, Doc said maybe. Home and Bargain is also selling pride and joy. Just crack a wine open. And what a beer. So because you are in New York. You forgot you were in New York. You were so off your tits. You forgot where you were. <laughs> uh, Luke, I never trust you with a secret again, mate. Everyone's giving away Jack secrets lately. Shocking. Brad was doing it the other day. Jack, you got to watch your back, mate. On Monday, Newcastle will be winning everything. Yeah, possibly. We've got the money too, that's for sure. I think our part owners of Leeds United, 49ers, will win it. Oh, yeah, of course. I forgot about that. You got, uh, they've got ownership with San Francisco. They made it as well, wouldn't they? They're in the semis, Super Bowl semis as well, which is mental. Oi, oi. We're joined by a Wookiee. Who's ready for this? Bosh. Looky, looky, it's the Wookiee. It's the Wookiee. Hey. How you doing? How you doing, mate? Oh, good, man. Oh, good, man. How's you? Yeah, not too bad. I've still got like remains of baby dribble on that. Uh, where what shoulder is it? Yeah, that one. There you go. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. He got got. He got gutted. Love it. Yeah. Love it. it was, drinking, my mate? wife's. Oh, mate, it's just like the wife's first night out tonight. So it was like, right, she she's breastfeeding on and off the bottle and all the rest of it. So it's just like, oh. <laughs> I had to oh, phone a friend, God. didn't I? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get the back up in. Yeah. Love it. Exactly that, mate. Love it. It's like that film, isn't it? Three men and a baby. You know, that <laughs> one baby causes all that problem. Three boats can't handle it. So true, though. But the thing is, as soon as the wife walks in, it's just like chilled. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything's back in control to make it look easy. And you feel like... The boom comes like, out, on she goes, and it's like the world's a better place straight away. Yeah. You just feel like a complete <laughs> tip for a little while afterwards, don't you? You think... Why can I do that? <laughs> to be fair, I've got the boobs through. I've actually got the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's trying. Trying. It's got me something to come out of it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Oh, yeah. we've, been, we've been putting the world to rights, Mark. We've been talking about politics, okay. the royal family, and all sorts of nonsense. Uh, <laughs> when, God, they, everyone's in the deep mood. Everyone's deep tonight. Oh, it's Tuesday, isn't it? It's Tuesday. It's, everyone, it's, it's caught everyone out, isn't it? Oh, we, don't do, we don't do Tuesday night live streams. What's going on? 
Have you had a whiskey, mate? Did you get a whiskey? I've had a few whiskeys already, to be fair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm on the uh I'm on the Glen Mongy the Santa cut the sherry cask 12 year old one. Oh, I bet that's all right. right. It's going down nicely. <laughs> going down nicely. What about you? Are you drinking anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm on a I'm on a 2022 uh strawberry and uh apple uh squash at the moment. Because I haven't had a drink for about two hours because I've had the baby on me, so I'm going to hydrate and get myself. Uh, I've got James and Stout edition in the fridge, so I'll get a little measure of that. There you go. That sounds like a good shot. Um, where was I? Where was I? Um, oh Christ, how far have I gone, mate? How cool is that, Ben from um, uh, oh, brewery, brewery, brewery. The brewery you were at in your video. Oh, Creative Juices. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 No, Ben He's Ben's a lovely bloke. He um they they um he lit their brewery's just around the corner from my, my sister in law. Right. And um we we went around there. They they were on a country file on BBC a couple of years ago. Okay. And I I I've driven past it a few times and I looked at the logo and I thought, I wonder if that's a brewery. But it didn't say. I just thought that is it a brewery or do they make like smoothies or something do you know what i mean I wasn't <laughs> yeah. sure. and then i got confirmation it was an actual brewery and i was like right i'm going so um yeah i went down there and i bumped into ben and we were sat in the garden having a beer and i did a video i put it out last summer and then uh and then we saw him at brew london yeah a month later um we chatted with him quite a bit over that weekend as well he's just a proper chill chill guy he is isn't he he's just yeah. like Nothing, nothing sort of phases in one of them sort of blokes. It doesn't seem to. It, it was weird. I mean, we, we organised it. I said, look, we're, we're going to come down and say hello, and get an update on the brewery and have a beer with you. And he's like, yeah, cool, that'd be great. You know, uh, the plan was to do a bit of recording, have a beer, and then we just got chatting. And he'd be like, do you want another beer? And we'd be like, yeah, go on, go on in, you know. And he's like, do you want another beer? Another beer. We, we were in there. We got in there for about half past three. We were still there at like 11. So we like he was tanked. That's so a session, had, mate. That was a proper session. He was <laughs> he was tanked, but we were all were, you know. So luckily Abby weren't drinking, so she drove everyone home. So it was great. But um, <laughs> yeah, this turned into a really good day in the tap room. It was brilliant. So um, oh mate, you can't be it looked like a nice day as well, like nice summer, like or sort of a sunny day. You can't be a nice sunny day yeah. in a tap room, that's for sure. I can say it was only it was last Thursday. So yeah, it was cold, yeah. but it was sun. It was a nice yeah. day, you know. So um yeah, it's proper. It's a really good set. I mean, the summer, that place is amazing. They got, yeah, they got a bath outside and get a coffee and out if you're not drinking. If people take their dogs over there, a massive great garden, and it all backs onto farmland and that. It's, it's lovely, really nice. So, um, yeah, recommend it definitely. Um, Cat's Mix is a like Abba, and Paul does. One of us is lying. <laughs> 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 there's a lot of ABBA fans in here and I said I'm not an ABBA fan it's not no me ABBA. neither mate if I'm honest <clears throat> it's just it, before my time I think that's all it is yeah I think that's common uh, Rich has just ordered a Brooklyn Nets jersey ready for the summer mm. oh. have you I got thought, some guns to wear that mate I've got to say you, you've got to be massive I, I can't pull off a basketball jersey like a up prick couldn't do it <laughs> couldn't do it uh Back in the day, Blackburn had loads of money, ended up winning the league. Simple money gets you along. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Even, even back in the day, it's when Tottenham used to win things. We just did it because we spent money. You know, it wasn't because we had the best players coming through our academy. Jimmy Greaves didn't come through our academy. You know, so it's always been the way. We were talking about the Super Bowl, how like, Cincinnati Bengals are in the semis. Literally yep. years ago, they were the worst team in the NFL. Now they're in with a shout of winning the Super Bowl. And they say that doesn't happen over here. No. Nah. You know, once once you're one of the top clubs, you stay one of the top clubs, and you've got to fight yeah. and get in there. But unless you're making a ton of dough, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know? I, I like the draft. I, I have to say, I like the draft system. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of it's like, I think there's more onus on like how the clubs are managed rather than what money's in the club. And I think I, I just got a lot of respect for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It'd be nice if they could change it. I mean, it'll never happen, but. No. It'd be nice if they could revamp it. Uh catch me, so I reckon with all that whiskey probably gonna end up a dancing queen. Yeah. <laughs> so who's gone there? 
Dancer Queen or Chikatita? Oh dear. Oh dear. Did your mother know you're drinking whiskey tonight? Right. I'm a big boy now. Do what I want. <laughs> I'm 13. You can't tell me what to do. Uh, <laughs> right. Think about Talk drinking craft beer, having a money, man. Exactly. I'm going to get myself one of these uh, whiskeys. Give us a two sex, mate. Get a drink, mate. Get a drink. Uh, Paul, any chance you can try a Hawkstone Lager, Clarkson's beer? Seen one review and it was highly recommended. I'd like to try it. Um, I think I've got some in my basket, in my Amazon basket. I've just got to press the buy button. Is it like, is it like 30, 35 quid for like 12 bottles though? What's to be good for that money? Excuse me. I just, I think I'd rather spend the money on something else at the moment. Cheers, Paul. Uh, my PD came today. Ooh, home bar is looking very good. Nice. That perfect draft is a nice looking bit of kit, isn't it? Nice looking bit of kit. Uh, John Hansen is in. Uh, how you doing, mate? Hi, Paul. Not dropped by this year. Sorry, pal. That's all right, John. How you doing, man? How are you? Nice to see you here. Matt's in. Evening, Chief. Hope you're well. Hello, Matt. How you doing, mate? Welcome along. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Rich Paul was the lead of the sexy Viking horde. It's only right you've grown your beard, doomed to your tats, uh, to be the head of the table. Yeah, I do need to make it a bit more bushy. I took a bit off a couple of weeks ago, and I've just kind of kept it off rather than letting it get too thick. But there you go, I fiddle with it. Do you think we'll ever have a system whereby the people actually feel listened to? Uh, no, not in my lifetime. Seen slugs with more backbone than MPs, yeah, true. Paul, which beer style will be big this year and make you say, Mamma mia! <laughs> Mamma mia! Um, I I reviewed a brown ale last night, which I will probably put up tomorrow. Um, I think a brown ale could be a popular style of beer this year. Um, I see a few breweries have already um, started brewing them, um, but I could see a few more doing it because, I, I, I mean, without brewing it, it, it comes across, it tastes like it's quite a simple recipe. Tastes like quite a simple beer to produce. Um, as long as you've got decent quality malt and hops. Um, yeah, brown ales, like American style brown ales, I think could have a, a big year this year. Um, and I'm hoping the West Coast IPA will continue will continue its trajectory. Um, as much as I like a New England IPA, it would be nice to see a proper IPA make a comeback. I want the hoppy finish, I want the pininess, you know. So it'd be, it'd be nice to see West Coast continue that upward trajectory, at least on the supermarket shelves. Because, I mean, IPAs are so New England dominated now. It's um, it's a bit silly, you know. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. If you want to, if you want generally, if you're aiming, I mean, they went at the craft beer, Mark, all the kind of, mate, well, the out, just out the person that's just outside of the craft beer circle, they went at them hard and, what do you do? You just fill something with sugar if you want people to like it. And I think that's kind of what they went for. Yeah. Easy, easy drinking, wasn't it? The New England thing. Yeah. It's like, what, what, what can we get? You know, what can we make that everyone's going to enjoy? And they've gone for these big fruity New England IPAs, which don't get me wrong. When it's done properly, it's awesome. It's awesome. You know, but um, a West Coast IPA, a good piney, dank, prickly kind of strong yeah. finish West Coast IPA. You can't beat it. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to see a few more of them on the on the shelves this year. So, yeah, I think those are probably the two styles I think will be big this year. The Brown Ale and the West Coast IPA. That would be my guess. I don't know about you, Mark. What do you reckon this year's going to be? I reckon... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I reckon Porter's going to be big this year. I think okay. Porter's going to have a good time. Um I think, yeah, I reckon either Mountain or West Coast. I think people that were got introduced to probably craft beer through like a Northern Monk IPA in um, the supermarket, they're now going to be going, oh, quite like craft beer. And I think that just nat the natural progression from the biggest entry level entry level beer or the biggest enticing beer from last year leads you on to your mountains and your West Coast. So that's where I sort of see it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I say, I think the supermarkets have a big part to play in that. So, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see where they go, what direction they go in, um, especially with the way things are at the moment and everything that came to light last night. It'd be nice to see the supermarkets kind of 
I keep hitting the bloody microphone. It'd be nice to see the supermarkets turn away from one particular brewery and start looking at a few yeah. others. They're doing yeah. some bloody good stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope they have a good year this year, the supermarkets, and they use a bit of common sense. I think it'll be interesting because I think in Tesco, if correct me, if, someone correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but in Tesco's, I believe the only West Coast IPA available is the Cloudwater Brewdog one. And obviously, from what we've seen from Cloudwater's press release yesterday, that's going to be coming to an end. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they put on the shelf in place of the West Coast. I think, I don't know, you just never know, do you? There might be, um, who, who knows? I mean, could a brewery like Burnt Mill or Duration or, um, you know, could could or, or Arbor even could could they look at breaking into the Tesco market? Yeah, I mean, the says they've already got a foot in the door with MS, haven't they? Arbor and Sainsbury's yeah. as well. You get this stuff so, yeah. Sainsbury's. so, um, I'll be bang up for that. Seeing more Arbor rails on oh, the supermarket yeah, yeah. shelves as long as they don't drop the quality because they've been one of my favorite breweries for a few years now. And, um, yeah, they're good. It'd be nice to get pint cans in the supermarkets as well. That's oh. just me being a bit selfish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The size of it. I love that. I, I love that. I always, always feel a little bit. I don't. I only ever had pint cans from Arbor, and then they yeah. started making a few in Sainsbury's, and you had the four forties. And I was like, I feel like I've been cheated here, you know. <laughs> but where's the pint cans? Come on. Um, Mister Beamer says my favourite beer from the UK is John Smith's Extra Smooth. Rather, well, I've got a four pack in Eugenia for ten pound. It was heaven. I loved it. Better on tap when I went back in 2019. 22 points and half a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> You're having a gig, <laughs> uh, Paul, which beer style would make you think, give me, oh, Christ almighty, the aberrations are in four this evening. Shocking. Uh, very bad hangover. My family was like, you can drink. Lol. Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, secret love child. Think about it. Born in the same place, 40 years-ish apart, both in politics and don't like each other. Do you reckon? <laughs> Boris and Donald? Uh, Tyson Fury for Prime Minister. Oof, <laughs> he won't resign. He'll keep it going until his investigation is finished, unfortunately. Yeah, I can't see him. I can't see him running away, you know. can't see him pulling out. Government Day said they will publish the findings, not the full information of Sue Gray's investigation. It's going to be a cover up. Of course, it will. We'll never get the full story. We'll never get the full story. The thing is, as well, if Boris, if Boris, if Boris leaves, who's going to take over that's any better than what he is? You know, they, they all look rosy on the outside. You yeah, know? That's, that's literally what we were saying is like everyone's calling for Boris's head. And I'm like, okay, but who's, who's going to come in? I don't, think it, you know, I don't think it matters red or blue, really. I think they're all just a bunch of scumbags. Exactly. Absolutely, my sentiments Every exactly. One of them. Um, it's like starting off as a labor and saying you're a bricklayer or a tiler, like, doesn't make sense. Government, yeah, government is absolutely destroyed. They, they don't care, they're not They're not there to do what they're supposed to do anymore. They're there to get rich and screw as many people over in the process. Breaking news, Paul punching the skull off his mic, burst my eardrums. <laughs> and the Sorry, mate. Anyone who's wearing headphones, I apologize. I need to get it out of the way. Really like that. So I, I, I fiddle with it. I'm bad. Um, it should be made law that doctors run the NHS, uh, soldiers run the army, navy and air force, and teachers run schools. All the MPs is it? Uh, they, they do. They balls it all up. Yeah, that's all they do. Make a mess of everything. Uh, Prince Andrew does sweat, but as much as Jack and Bread, when you uh, you know, you know, or you feel. <laughs> bit of filth, bit of smut. Love it. Uh, he said he couldn't sweat that he never met the victim. And there's proof of Andrew with the victim. In a picture, yeah. Never met her. He literally got his hand round her waist, mate, you know. Lock him up and all. Yeah. Things with Starmie isn't saying to resign for Boris for moral purposes. He's saying it, it for political games, for political gain. Absolutely. Everyone's suddenly calling for Boris Johnson because they're thinking, oh, there's a promotion here. Yeah, that's it. That's it, mate. Right, uh, 50 pay rise, get him out of the way. That'll change things up a little bit, you know. I mean, you, you've only got to look at um, what, what, what was happening in Scotland and Wales with when England or the, the English government decided that we keep restrictions pretty low through Christmas. It was almost like a protest decision. Scotland and Wales done the exact opposite and it didn't really get them anywhere, you know. Um, and we ended up okay after New Year. 
So, yeah. you know, it's all political games. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. It's just disgusting that they've politicised this thing. You know, it's just yep. the one time that we needed them, you know, to kind of help us out. And they've just, they've made the whole thing a political. And they still are. You know, yeah. the whole the whole NHS thing. NHS staff who don't want to have a jab. They're losing their jobs. You know, they're saying, oh, if you, if you don't have the jab, then we're going we're gonna to sack you. You know, that, that's totally against human rights. And it's essentially the COVID jabs that we're all having are still a trial jab. You know, they're, they're less than three years old. It's still at a trial stage. And yeah, the people who are in charge and the people that are making the NHS staff make these decisions aren't prepared to put their names forward as like responsible should something go wrong with these people no. it's a scandal like and they're not talking about it they're not talking about it in the news this is going on right now nhs staff are being forced to have covid jabs otherwise yeah. they're losing their jobs that's that is a scandal and there's a massive protest today nothing was covered on the news was it no they won't talk about that was it yesterday? huge protest yeah people this, throwing their, it's going on their right room. now and they're, they're covering it up. They're not talking about it. They're just yeah. talking about Boris and parties in Downing Street. And that it's... There's, there's, well, that's there's the thing as well, isn't it? Like, oh, you do have to wonder what's done it, what, what he's done is done. You know, and I don't agree with the parties or whatever they might have been happening. But mm. equally, let's, why is he spending all this energy? You know, he's, he's spending all his time defending a party that happened a year uh, a year ago, a little bit longer than that. Yeah, it last night. Yeah. Honestly, I, 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 do, I do get the whole into account thing, but quite frankly, there's some bigger things on the table at the moment that we need to sort out. Yeah, but that, that's that's when these things come out, though. When there's something massive going on, they, yeah. they bring out another story and take our take our eyes away from it. You know, that's yeah. how they do. That's how they do. You know, it's um, what was it? Was, what was the day? It was Boris. Boris announced the birth of his baby, and something like major happened. It was like, come on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there, there, were, there were literally millions of people that marched on on Parliament like a couple of years ago. And it was like a full-on anti-government march. Like one of the biggest turnouts they've ever seen for a protest in the city. And no, not a single media camera were there. Yeah. No one was was touching it. They're like, no, you can't report that. You can't report that. You know, it's, <laughs> they they, they 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 control the media. They tell them what to report and what not to report. You know. Uh, I mean, if I'm being, am, am I being soft by saying I don't know how Paul's still sitting there not swaying, drinking that Scotch drink? <laughs> I've not drunk that much. I've only had three drams. Yeah, I've just got a little one. <sighs> My wife got me this uh, last week. Look at that. How cool is that? It's honestly it's well good, isn't it? Because I put my oh, bottle tops at the moment in there. Yeah. So I've got to get that up somewhere now. You've got to fill that up, stick it up behind you somewhere. It's cool, cool, isn't it? That's proper smart. I love that. Mark's been reviews. That was 2021. Proper it's smart. Good. <laughs> Mark's 2021 vintage. That's it, yeah. I to like be fair. I, love, I didn't get loads of stuff like that, can't you? Probably. <laughs> that, that was a bottle, by the way. That's what you want. That's Mark's sort of. That's, that's his favourite style, size Belgian <laughs> triple. That is. That's uh, that's how he wants them. Um, Roy's a new waffle manager. Oh, enjoy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Wow. Well, just saying, he can't stay away, can he? He cannot stay away from the game. He's really old as well. Like in, in football terms, he's sort of early seventies, isn't he? I was going to say. Hello, David. Uh, can I just confirm? I was never on Sex Island. I was in a Pizza Express in Liverpool. Having me dough balls. <laughs> Nightmare when you're drinking your local. The same moment, wake up in Vegas. I hate it when it happens. I hate it when it happens. <laughs> uh, all right, Mark, you sexy Ewok loving car park special. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Captain. I love how we put all that together. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it's the Duke of Kent. Look, what's up? Mate, the Duke of Kent. Hello, love mate. It. Love it. Uh, what's happening, Mark? Uh, Charlton playing tonight. How'd you get on tonight? Oh, my. <laughs> we were in the Pizza Cup, weren't we? Pizza Cup quarterfinals. Oh, right. Got beat 5 4 on penalties by Hartlepool. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think we, I don't think it was the strongest of strong teams, but you still got to be beating Hartlepool, haven't you? You should be. Yeah. 
just on paper, Charlton Athletic versus Hartlepool. <laughs> the reality of uh, supporting a lower league team. <laughs> there it is there, right there. They were Premier League not so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> Realities of football. Those are good old days. Clive Mendonca. Scoring for the oh, Premier League. Getting them in the Premier League. What player? Did Darren Bent or Darren Ambrose score? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'd die for either of them back at the moment, mate. Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> hey, Luke. Not, right. uh, Mark, are you relegated to Nigella Lawson? Am I related to Nigella Lawson? I don't know. I'd like to be attached to Nigella Lawson. <laughs> <laughs> Phil. Oh dear. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Or Susanna oh, Reed. That's that's another one that I think the same answer's suitable. <laughs> yeah. Both a couple of milk, so no. Both of them. Cropper. Cropper. Uh Mark reminds me of Ricky Gervais. I know it makes no sense. But he don't. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. He's uh, just done that, ladies and gentlemen. He's just done that. One shouldn't minute done 36. That. You can make a note of that. He did the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Love a good whiskey, says Taylor Ben. Good matter. Are you having a whiskey? It is Burns night. That is why we're drinking Scotch whiskey. It is Burns I'm drinking night. Irish, though. Is it? Oh, it's scandalous. I've scandalous. got Scotch in the house. I forgot about that. Yeah, Jameson's. Never mind. It's whiskey. It's all the matters. Uh, Barman B looks like Simon Cow. does a little bit. Does a little bit. He'll love that. Would you be friends with someone that constantly lies? No. So why should we vote for liars? Uh, and we don't know. And so far away. Exactly. Exactly. I'd, everyone, everyone, you know, we've all got the right to vote and all that. I'd, I've, I've had mates in the past moan at me for not voting. And I've always said why I don't vote. And I think now they probably understand why I said that more than ever. Yeah. You know? I think since the referendum, I think they understood why I said it more than ever because they've done everything they can, it seems, in the last five or six years to completely betray the trust of the British public. So, um, yeah, if you want to vote, awesome, but just don't preach to people who don't. You know that that that's my advice. You know. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Uh, nice that Mark James and Stat edition. I enjoyed it, mate. It's all right um, to be fair. I don't really drink whiskey, but I knew I had it in the fridge. That yeah, fridge yeah. cupboard <laughs> reload. <laughs> Honestly, I just uh, I just I'd done this beer with Crummy earlier. It was a seven Russian Imperial Stout. Oh, yeah, how, how was it, mate? Uh, I won't spoil the review. It was um interesting, um. <laughs> But yeah, it felt every bit of seventeen percent about an hour after. So, Ooh, which was it? Was it a marshmallow Russian imperial? Um, yeah, it's a marshmallow. It's a Russian imperial stout. It's called Marshmallow Abaddon, and it's been flavoured with marshmallow. Ooh. So, right. I like that. So, was it like? Was there a lot of sort of the roasted malts with the marshmallow, and then just a serious booty kick? It was fun. Yeah, it was funny. It was sort of. Um, I think Crum Crummy's gonna the, the review's gonna go live on Crummy's channel probably about a week's time, but um yeah, it was a real sort of um flavour flavour battle, but uh yeah, it was interesting, it was good. That I'll, was from really, John Frost uh, nonetheless. I really like the um the Barney's one that they put out in Lidl a couple of years ago, that Barney's marshmallow stout. Did you have that one? Got it, never got oh. it. Oh, it was I, I missed it the first time around. And then they bought it out a second time. Oh, it was lovely. Really nice. It was. Uh, Where is that now? Is that one for the history books? Not been out for a little while? Or? I don't know if Barney sell it on their website. They might sell it on right. their own website. But um, yeah, it went, in, it went in Lidl's twice, three times maybe. And it was stunning. Like really, like way too good for Lidl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, how they put that It's you know. funny. Uh, Tom says, Mark's beer. Right, Tom. Uh, Tyson Fury versus AJ ain't happening. Too much politics in boxing. Boxing ain't the same sport it used to be. It's a shame because it's a great sport. There's just too much money involved, isn't there now? Agents are protecting their fighters. You know, it's they're all pussies. And an AJ fan. Mark's beer review streaming later. <laughs> yeah, Mark's been <laughs> off <laughs> No, I'm not. I've got, honestly, Friday, it was all going cushy on Friday, right? It was all going fine. I had a couple of beers and I've got these three buggers out. Oh, he 
went Belgium. I mean, a left A triple at 8.5, a Bruin at 7.5, and, and a triple at 8. And it absolutely, <laughs> these three. Triple Chabay, that's just your warm up. <laughs> my ass, honestly. Three drinks, I'll have a few triples. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Uh, as an AJ fan, he needs to retire. He can beat Usyk or Fury. They are too good. I mean, Usyk beat him up, didn't he? That was um, that was actually embarrassing at the end. You know, yeah, they, they, they could have stopped that fight. They could have stopped it in that last round, but AJ was just on the ropes, just taking shot after shot. They could have stopped it, but they they held off. And I think apparently someone said they rang the bell early, so it didn't look like he was uh, he was stopped. Mm. Uh, but he battered him. Usyk battered him. It was, um, it was proper awkward. <laughs> uh, anyway, lads, I'm off to finish these last two bottles of Warsteiner. Paul, mate, it's been a pleasure. Keep up the work on the channel. Mark, see you soon, mate. Keep up the good work. Talk soon. Enjoy your night. Thank you, Chris. Take care, Chris. Take care, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, has anyone been to Afterlife Season 3 yet? I loved it. Yes. Yeah, I, I did, mate. Yeah. Cracking show. Cracking show. Funny and absolutely heartbreaking at the same time. It's um, a brilliant bit of TV, that is. Really good. Have you watched that one, Mark? I haven't. I just don't watch television, mate. No? <laughs> don't watch television. Honestly, football and porn, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Mark Fury reviews. Football and porn, that's about it. Sorry, 22. <laughs> Uh, now, nah, if you've not seen Afterlife, check it out. Really good. Ricky Gervais, mate, he's a, he's a funny guy. He is a geezer, um, isn't he? Hello, Phil. Where's Trilby tonight? Where's Trilby? He's probably in bed by now. He, uh, he usually got to bed quite early, doesn't he, Phil? Sent you a pic of my duck. I mean, my guns. You can be the judge if I suit the jersey. Oh, you've been sending me... I told you about sending me topless pics, Richie. <laughs> what are we doing? What have we got? <laughs> uh, they said a picture of him laying there on the sofa with his arm out. State of it, look. We're going to go on the show. Yeah, the, ta the tattoo, you you'll shoot perfectly up in an old feast, mate, with that tattoo, wearing a basketball vest, mate. You'll be no one will say nothing. No one will say nothing. Love it. Uh, can't tell me what to do until Abby comes in. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the boss until the wife comes in. I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, yeah that's right. Whatever you want, love. Uh, best players to come from your team's academy. Gerard, Fowler, McManaman, Carragher, Owen and Trent. That's a good list of players, isn't it? So come through the Tottenham Academy. Uh, Tottenham Ac I wish they'd come through the Tottenham Academy. Oh. To come through the Liverpool Academy. I think the best players to ever come through the Tottenham Academy is Glenn Hoddle. And then after that, I'm not going to say his name. The one that joined Arsenal, I won't say his name. Ledley King was a bloody good one that came through the academy. Yeah. What player? Yeah, they were. We Harry had... Kane was your academy, wasn't he? Who's that? Was Harry Kane your academy? Yeah, yeah, Harry yeah. Kane. He probably would have been the next one. I'm still not, I'm still not happy with him, but he's <laughs> flirting with City. I don't think I'll ever forgive him for that. You know, it's, uh, it's what it's he is. Charlton, we've done all right. We've we've had like Joe Gomez, um, Jermaine Defoe, um, John Joe Shelby when he joined Liverpool. I thought. It, I thought he was going to be the next Gerard. He was unbelievable for Charlton. Um, uh, Nick Pope, the goalkeeper, he's pretty good. Uh, Lee Bowyer. Oh, Lee Bowyer. Um, yeah, we've had we've had quite a lot. We've uh, got quite a good little academy going. We've got this new lad called Mason Burst, though. He's 18. He's I think he's our top scorer so far this season. He's only played a handful of games. Blimey. Yeah. I think West Ham wanted him, but he... I don't know. I don't know what's happened because uh, we normally flog them on for well cheap. But um, our chairman's tied him down to a contract, so if you want him, they've now got to buy him. Is it pay the money or go away? Exactly that, which is good. That's what you want. It, I think it'd be it'd be good if more young players actually stuck it out. You know, yeah. earn, earn their spurs and you know. Scott Parker, we mentioned him. Scotty Parker, yeah, great player, great player. Got a lot of time for Scotty Parker. No one, no one could run around in circles better than Scott Parker. No one. <laughs> the it master incredible. of the Cruyff turn. Yeah. And he never even meant it. He didn't He didn't even do it cleverly. He just literally just ran in circles. <laughs> he just confused the hell out of people. He didn't know what he was going to do. He was a good player, though. Yeah, he was. 
sausage. It's a whiskey nights. It is. It's the Lord's Brewing Co. beer on the shelf, I think. Oh, yeah, I know Mark's definitely got some Lord's beers behind oh, him. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple. I've got that one. Uh, there's a, the coal shop there. That's your banding car. The Baller Mountain IPA was somewhere. There it is. Baller. Yeah. Love there's it. There's a few knocking about. Love it. I've got I've got Jasper up there somewhere. I can see North Constellations on that on your shelf. Yeah. No, not no, it's North Alpha Delta in it, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, North the uh, abstract, yeah. I love that beer. That was good. Love that beer. I've got all my uh I've got all my Americans on the top shelf, apart from Celebrator and Jasper. But I've got the Sierra Nevada Stout and the Porter. <clears throat> out, you can't get in this country anymore, so I thought I'll keep you in there. Mm. I did see a little space on the Asta shelf for uh for a uh, Sierra Nevada beer. Oh, I, I, I don't. I, I took the ticket to the customer service. I was like, "Can you scan this?" And they were like, "Yeah, we've got no stock." But it was called like um, hoppy little thing or something. Blue oh right, yeah, was it blue and yellow thing or, or hazy little thing. Could have been hazy little thing actually. Um, hazy thing. But yeah, blue and white can because I know they've done a few, didn't they? They've done that wild little thing in the red and white. Um, That's right. Yeah. But yeah, so, like Sierra Nevada going into Asda. <laughs> Crazy. God, I love Sierra. I mean, the thing is, they, they brew like English versions. They they brew like yeah. lower ABV versions for the UK market. It's really yeah. Annoying. But um, I had an email. I got an email from Sierra Nevada today, actually. And they're just uh, the beers that are coming up on the um, the Cascade Club. Ah, uh, yeah. That, I'd look at the. I signed up to that actually. I probably got an email. I don't know what's happened to yeah. it. I just never check my emails. <laughs> so we've got we've got Atomic Torpedo coming out. And it is a 8.2% juicy West Coast double IPA. Ooh. And it just, it looks and sounds incredible. Yeah. It, it looks quite a sinister can, that, doesn't it? It's and it's going to be in pint cans as well. Like 500, 568 mil are English pint cans. 8.2%. I'm all over that like a rash. That'll do, isn't it? Yeah. Just a bit. I will be off my tits. I think <laughs> Can't wait. Cannot wait. Um, Chris says, can't believe I never said, but Chelsea win the Champions League again. And going, yeah, yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris is off to smoke some Moroccan woodbine. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> Quality flavoured stouts. Your favourite. Quality flavoured stouts. I don't want to do it. Oh, I don't want to do it. But I will okay. do it. We know what he's going for. The vibrant forest. He's there. He's there. Every time. Every time. What was, what was the flavour on that one? Was that a black forest one? It was an imperial coffee stout, but it was cognac barrel aged. Oh, right. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. Like, yeah. Wow. What a journey. Naughty. Naughty. Um, I mean, I generally I like a I like a bourbon barrel aged stout. They they tend to be my favourite stouts. Um, I don't really like. I mean, I, I like some coffee stouts, but I, I like a traditional stout. But I do like a barrel aged one. Mm. Uh, but I don't like. I don't. I'm not all that much into flavoured ones. That, that was one? pretty good. That's my local brewery, Ampersand, and that was a coffee and cinnamon milk stout at six point eight. Mm. That was very, very good. They released that in like November, so it was just like perfect time of year. Yeah, that sounds good, man. That sounds good. Cinnamon, anything with cinnamon, in it, I'm all over that. I like the Barney's. Um, I like the Barney's marshmallow one. They put in little. That was nice. Um, I do like a good coffee stout. I had um, found a CBS. Again, that was a barrel aged. It was a bourbon barrel aged, but before that, the barrel was stored maple syrup. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was it was a maple bourbon barrel aged stout. Yes, and, um, they don't even they don't brew it anymore because the barrels got that old that they weren't picking up the maple yeah. character anymore. So they stopped brewing it. I've got the bottle from the last batch in 2019. That was a bit special. Um, but their KBS, if you've had Fuller's um, Founders KBS, every year it's outstanding. And they do, they release, um, they release a coffee version. And I think they may have actually done a cinnamon one as well. Mm, so, okay. um, but generally, if it's a bourbon barrel aged stout, I'm all over it. But I'm not massive on 
I've flavoured things. But I mean, Mark's just come out with a couple of bangers there. I say, Vibrant yeah. Forest, that sounds awesome, that one. That was stupid, honestly. It, it, it wasn't... Um, it was just a... Co- it, obviously, it was roasty. It was coffee, cinnamon. Obviously, it's coffee. So it's got coffee added to it. And then, obviously, the roasted malts gave that extra coffee. Then you had the big chocolate. The, the malt base actually brought more chocolate than coffee to the party. And then... That cognac barrel age thing, it just left this l- beautiful vanilla chocolate taste in the mouth for about two or three minutes after. It was absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah, it was good. good. That does sound good. Oh, so, uh, yeah, any, any, anything barrel aged for me. But um, yeah, what about you, Tom? Have you got a preference or are you, you looking for recommendations? Um, <laughs> Jack says, I've got an idea. Let's talk about Pro Dog more. Oh, gosh. That was it. That was it in the glass. Oh my goodness! Look at the state of that. <laughs> it was wow, <laughs> that's just that's sticky as hell. Wow, yeah, that was a good one. Wow, Dave was a pint cans for the win, absolutely. Paul, have you had the wheat beer from Arbor? Then as um, have I had Arbor's wheat beer? I certainly haven't. I said I don't remember having a wheat beer from Arbor. Not yet, anyway. I'll look at it. I'll have to have a look for that. I don't think I've had it. I can't know. Nah, I don't think I've had a wheat beer from Arbor at all. I will look for that, see if they've still got one in the range. Uh, Jack, please report to the Naughty Corner again. Poor Jack. <laughs> Poor Jack. The thing with the Bird Dog documentary, it was on in Scotland at 7 pm. Most trucks would either be on the White Lightning, eating something deep fried, or on heroin by that time. <laughs> Outrageous, Captain Mick. Outrageous. So much they call it Jack's Corner these days. It is Jack's Corner. It's been going slippery. You've been naughty. Who has the worst cum face, Boris or Prince Andrew? Depends if you're looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's face it. Prince Andrew just touches you with the lights off. <sighs> Dear. Boris. Boris seduces you with his hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's more of a slow thing with Boris. <laughs> I hope he just spins around like a car wash, you know, like a car wash thing, and all his hair just goes out. <laughs> oh, dear. Where's this going? Uh, David always says, no, I right, will catch you another day. Cheers, David. Thanks for joining Take us, mate. Uh, MPs will find police, don't investigate retrospective crimes, just work on crimes committed in the future these days. Apparently, if you kill someone last year, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Anyone tries to catch up with you about something you did last year, just say, Pro- can't, you can't do me now. It's gone. Imagine Jacob Rees Mogg as Prime Minister. Welcome back to Victorian times. <laughs> oh, rather not. Uh, I would if I knew who he was captain, mate. Everyone with power lies for all they're on it. Dodgy dealings. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> it's a road documentary. He said he ate kids. Well, wow. well. Wow. Fair point. Notice when you know what first broke news for the full year. We never heard of one terrorist attack on Earth. Yeah, but it's all locked up. All the terrorism stopped, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love you believe. The media's bought and paid for by the politicians and their donors, exactly. Wonderful present. Blind man surely they was made to stay home. Exactly. Terrorists were told to stay home and they totally obeyed the rule. <laughs> they were told to protect lives and save the NHS. That's it. That's it. Stay at home, apart from Thursday evenings when you come out and clap your hands for a minute. Apart from oh. that, you got to stay indoors. The hypocrisy of all that now is disgusting when you think about it. Um, that action came way too naturally, Mark. You schlag. Oh, it must have been the old bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You old gobbler, Phil. <laughs> uh, gobbler perked up my attention. Oh, dear. He's blue. He's blue. I tell you what MP should be doing, stopping gas, electricity, food and council tax prices rising. I'm paying £200 a month on council tax, £200 on fuel, and pay national insurance income tax and VAT. We're getting skinned. We're getting absolutely skinned and everything's just going up. And I'm thinking, well, you know, when are you going to start putting the national minimum wage up to, to match that? You know, it's crazy. How are people meant to cope? How? It's so, mad. I'm- I've had to put three pound on my hourly rate just because of fuel. Um, yeah. Van insurance has gone up. Uh, public liability insurance has gone up. Everything's gone up. Yeah. So you have to. You don't want to, but you have to. 
But yeah. I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones that can dictate that. What about these? You know, I don't know. You're the same, Paul. Um, what about these people that just can't? They're locked into these contracts. But ask for a pay rise. Boss tells them to bugger off, and they go yeah. home and worry how they're going to pay the bills this month. Exactly. It's, it's obscene the way that we're being done at the moment. You know, and the government ain't stepping in to do anything about it. So it shows you how much they care. Uh, did I miss one there? Luke wondered if you'd bite on that. Sounds dodgy. <laughs> Uh, Mark, he's blue, he's blue, he is. Nigella Lawson, 60. No way, she's 60. She's 60. 60, 60, 660 is the new 40, apparently. There you go. A bit of pain during bondage, silky jank. Look more like Bruce Forsyth's grandkid. <laughs> What's Bruce Forsyth's grandkid? <laughs> nice to see you, see you nice. Uh, Jack says, Luke, are you catfishing me? But in reverse, you're actually a 25 year old stunning female, aren't you? I mean, come on, wow, yeah. Well, how long ago was that one taken? Is that a recent picture? Uh, it's taken yesterday. Watching <laughs> 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 Nigella just zoom in on that, yeah, screenshot, <laughs> bosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, for the bank. Uh, if it took 30 years plus for the Hillsborough families to get justice, how long will we wait for justice for this government actions over the whole situation? <sighs> that Hillsborough thing was just an absolute mess. Yeah. <clears throat> I've in talking, you know, I think they're lucky it wound on for so long because if, if you're going to talk misjust or injustice or misjustice, I think you're probably going to struggle to beat that one. That was, yeah. I mean, they blamed the people as well. They blamed the fans. They blamed the yep. people that died. They, they blamed everyone but the people that actually needed blaming. I mean, don't get me wrong, football fans played their part. But um, Yeah, of the, course, yeah. When the, when the police covered it up and the media covered it up for them and you had the Sun printing stories about it and, you know, accusing people of doing this, that and the other. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. You yeah. Know? Uh, well, yeah, it's disgusting. That's why no one should ever buy the Sun. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Paul, can I check? Is that a Jenna Jameson? A Jenna Jameson? No, oh, do you remember Jenna Jameson back in the day? Jenna Jameson, <laughs> yeah, stunner, stunner, down an absolute pint mixed with uh, oral toothpaste and a little bit of pepper with me Budweiser. Absolutely incredible. Would recommend it, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a banging, banging cocktail. That one. I've, to be fair, I'm sure I've seen that one on the Weatherspoon's cocktail menu, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack says, well, I'm gutted. I wanted the Luke I fell in love with. Oh, it's getting emotional here. Uh, we've got a new one. This one is called, let's have a look at this name. So he's called The Chronic Masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> got me there. Says, I'm a Stella man myself. Nothing like sipping my nice cold Stella. And coming home to give the wife a cup back to her. <laughs> Why don't I even read that out? Why don't I even read that out? Thanks for coming, why, Chronic. Why was it called Wife Beater? Was it something to do with the strength and it made people angry or something? Oh, yeah, I was back in the day. It was, it yeah. was quite a lager, wasn't it? Compared it was six to percent or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, when I first started drinking, it was 5-2. And um, you have a few of them. Yeah, it went straight to your head. I, that, was, that was the first beer I used to drink. Six pints of that, I was a mess. You yeah. know? It was great times. Great times. Never, never any women though. So I don't know where the wife beat it came. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I'm just too tame. I don't know. Um, Captain, that's what you're saying. Tame. <laughs> it, 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 it affected me the wrong way. I think it didn't work. It's a funny rule. You know, you got, you got, you know, Mark's drinking seventy percent stout, so no one bats a fucking eyelid, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. What I like it. How it's changed. Oh dear. Uh, that's what you get when you have a choice between third wave uh, and socialists versus socialists. Tax and national insurance rises, conservatives don't even act like conservatives these days, it seems. Uh, it all matters. Uh, Jack Howard, butterfly. I'm not sure what that is. Holy crap, super original chronic. You thought about doing stand up comedy. Yeah, I know he's funny. Uh, that was chronic. If a politician sticks true to their word, he's a politician. I'd have a conversation with yet to have a conversation with him. exactly. Exactly. You'll never find one. 
Chronic could batter a fish like his missus. <laughs> Jack's fine, babe. Here we go. It's on. After last shows one actor, Ricky Gervais is the emotion he gets out. He does though. I didn't realise Ricky Gervais had it in him. You know, it, it, I'm not even gonna lie, those last couple of episodes, the series three, I was a little bit like, whoa, you know, and the missus sitting right next else. to me. You can't cry, you can't cry next to the wife. So I had to hold it back, you know. Come on, come on. I'm like, oh, oh, football, women, boobs, rugby. No, no, I'm hard, I'm hard, don't cry. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Luke does all this talk with dodgy MPs. Put you on edge, mate. It's okay, it's all getting to beat. It's getting deep, it's getting deep. Uh, some local councillors can actually be all right as you're trying to help local community. The problem is the more embedded you get in Parliament, the more corrupt they become. Exactly, exactly. Chronic's like, relax, it's a joke. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. We love it, Chronic. It's all good. Uh, is League Two a big financial lift from National League football? It's full time, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. You, you, get, you start getting a bit of the old TV money from Sky, didn't you? Because they're showing a lot of League, a lot of League Two, and that now, and yeah. sponsorships and stuff. Yeah, it's huge, Paul. There you go. Once you're a professional, you're doing it full time. Yeah, and like I say, as soon as the TV get involved. The money just yeah. unbelievable. Uh, where are we at? Newcastle might just stay up if we're lucky. And uh, Mark Shelby, John Joe Shelby, what are you saying? Mark Shelby, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, he's a good player for us. Yeah, he, I think he scored the winner at the weekend, didn't he? Shelby beat um, who did you beat? Was it Leeds? That's right, yeah, it was wasn't it? One nil at Leeds. Oh, no. how Voldemort, he's a good pass of the ball, isn't he? He, he can spray yeah. it about John Joe Shelby. He Bit used of an to... He used to like when you go back to the Charlton and the Liverpool days. He used to like really stride out of midfield with it, and he'd break the lines. And that's what like like Gerard used to. And it was like bloody hell. That's why we all, he was called the next Gerard in the in the Charlton circles. But then I never quite made it. Stevie G, Stephen Gerrard was something else. He was a, a proper what player, that? proper player. Yeah, incredible stuff. I wonder if his managerial career will be as good. Well, it's looking it good. Yeah. Could be. He could be an England manager in the making then. Yeah. Uh, stuffing the yacht with the brand envelopes as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> Living not in London, it continues. And I was okay. Joe so Gummer's been amazing. Worried the injuries are caught up. Yeah, yes, a bit worried. Does get a lot of injuries for a young lad, doesn't he? Joe Gomez. Not yeah, good. He does. He does. Connie Quartz down Newcastle. <coughs> there you go. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Newcastle. I've got, I've got, uh, my grandmother was from Newcastle, so I'll look out for him. But it would be funny if they went down there. It would be funny. Um, no, we don't need a point, mate. What's Joe to me, mate? You don't know who I am. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. Ran over. Well done, John. I enjoyed it. It was good. Uh, I'm shy at me. Tom Stock surprised myself getting elected. Last time I drank 10 star of promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been ironic by saying, uh, don't you know who I am? Don't you know who I am? Because no one knows. It's true, Jack. We know who you are, son. He's a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> it's it's like, but Jack Howard is pretty much Jack Howard is pretty much as well known as any uh, as any beer reviewer on here now, isn't he? Really? He is. Yeah, he does. He, he's he's bang on the lives and that, and he everyone yeah. knows him. It's never Who's it? You know, I am Ronnie Pickering. I just Ronnie, got that. Video. I love that video. <laughs> the more we asked him, the louder he got. Ronnie <laughs> Pickering. Right back around. <laughs> <laughs> what a knob. I've seen that video and thought, oh my God, what a twat. Oh. What a twat. Um, hey, Travis is in. Hi, <laughs> Travis. How are we doing? Hey, Trav. Evening, fellas. It's Australia Day today. Public holiday today in Australia. There you go. So I bet you still work, though, Trav. There you bet go. he worked. <laughs> He's still grinding, isn't he? He's still making the money. I mean, I'll have to do some Australian beer reviews. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Hope you well, Trav. Uh, Indeed. The question is, did you help out your local beer community? Here's a little thing. Here's a little thing go blue. Am I catching up with the chat? No. Nah. Uh, thought it was. Apparently not. That player that will Liverpool fans can't wait to see. Harvey Elliott. Mm. This lad is Gerard Good. Trust me. There's a lot made of him. A lot of talk about Harvey Elliott. 
Was it Fulham? Is it Fulham he came from? Harvey yeah, Elliott? he came from Fulham. Had a really good loan spell with uh, Blackburn last year, like lit, borderline like lit it up. Wow. And um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. It'd be interesting to see him. It'd be another one, another midfielder though, wouldn't it? Is he like a number sort of a creative player? Is he like a number ten type player? Yeah, I believe he, he might do. It. Yeah, he was one of them, like ten on the wing kind of players. I think I'm sure Captain will um, correct me, but to he does look good. <laughs> he does look go good with the, to go with the million other players that we have played yeah. in that position at the moment. Bloody hell. <laughs> All we need is a good centre half, a couple of good England centre halves. That's what we're crying yeah. out for at the moment. <laughs> Someone else other than Carl Walker at the back, right back. Oh my god, god. Any sense, does it? I, 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 I love Carl Walker. I think he's a great player, but he's not a centre half. Uh, yes, yeah, Tommy drank most of it. What more can they want? Hello, uh, always Tom Stop. Helping the local community is a good thing. Uh, the cause light, uh, not like fire extinguishers, bad in New York. I like fire extinguishers. All right, <laughs> Simo's in. Hello, Simo. Good evening. Hello, Simo, mate. How do Simo's here. Uh, your review on the current whiskey you're drinking. I, I'm just kind of nicking it. I, I need to pour another one because there's another one gone. <laughs> I should review it really. I should review it. I just don't get my chow whiskey. It just tastes like, I don't know. There's a fire. Tastes like whiskey. Tastes <laughs> <laughs> like, like whiskey, that one. Well, there it is in the glass. Oh, look at the glass, look. Look at the glass. Look at, the glass. Views. Look at that. Look at the glass. Then we've got my own ex whiskey glass. Isn't it lovely? Uh, yeah, it looks like whiskey. It's uh, golden colour, crystal clear, very low levels of carbonation. <laughs> <laughs> Caramel, toffee. Bit of dark fruit and just an enraging inferno. Bit of bonfire, bit of smoke on the palate. Really sweet on arrival. It is sherry cask aged. So there's going to be a bit of sweetness to it. Dark fruit, bit of brown sugar, dark fruits again. And then comes the heat. Caramel, toffee, then you get in a warmth. But it's smooth. For a 12 year old barrel aged 43% scotch, that's ridiculously drinkable. 12 years, it's mental, isn't it? It's like, what business plan? If you're starting off a business, if you start a whiskey business, your business plan's going to look pretty ropey for the first 12 years, isn't it? Yeah. But you know, I, want to, I want to start a distillery and be like, um, <laughs> and you're looking for investment. Are you sure? Are you sure? Um, but yeah, that that that's a lovely whiskey. Um, Glenmore and the original is a lovely whiskey. But if you want something slightly sweeter, that is the La Santa, which is the sherry, the sherry cask aged one. It's very nice, very nice. There we go. But yeah, nice, nice tipple, nice tipple. Uh, your thoughts on haggis? I actually don't mind haggis. If you don't talk about it and just eat it, it's actually quite nice. I don't know if I've ever knowingly had haggis but it's always been something i've avoided for one reason or another and i'm well into my food as well and I'm normally more <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, don't but... anything that goes yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah I, I, I don't mind it nice bit of haggis with uh, a bit of swede and uh yeah it, i think they call that like neeps and tatties or something haggis that's neeps right. and tatties yeah that's yeah. right yeah I've heard of it. no I haven't, I haven't had it i haven't had haggis for a few years to be fair but when i had it I thought this is actually quite nice. I just thought it tasted it meaty, you know. Sheep's stomach or something. Yeah, it's like sheep intestines and shit like that, isn't it? Really? Haggis. Oh, so, is it? Some someone someone will know. Someone there. Yeah. Right. Let me get let me goggle it. The old goggles. The old goggle. I'll have this. Yeah, never, never had it. Haggis. It's got a dish consisting of sheep or calves offal. Mixed yeah, with oatmeal and seasoning. Oatmeal, uh, all within a bag. Just only one made from the animal's stomach. Yeah, an enormous haggis. Yeah, so yeah, it's basically yeah, sheep guts and stuff like that. You know, Jesus Christ, delicious. 
Tom hello, Simo. Hey, up, Travis and Simo. So, Luke, uh, which is I'm glued to classic Guinness draft at the moment. Uh, it's definitely worse beers you could be stuck to. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Neil. Just finished watching Afterlife at Ricky Javos. Oh, yeah, don't. Don't, mate. Don't. Absolutely spot on. Make a grown man cry. Slip is, uh, almost welling up one minute and then crying. Like, exactly. Exactly. I don't. I honestly don't know of another TV show that's ever done that to me before. Where one minute I'm laughing my ass off, and the next I'm like got tears in my eyes. But it's like, ooh, <laughs> deep. You know, bloody good show. Bloody good show. Uh, Rich says, Mark, have you heard of the Scar singer, Judge Dredd? Judge Dredd? Are we in you related to him or something? I remember you saying it before. I I, I haven't, I'm not Scar music's not the thing, mate, but um, but I think you related to him, didn't you, from what you were saying before? That's right. He says, haven't been from the Garden of England. So he's from the neck of the woods, is he, apparently? Yes. Uh, Mark Nelson is in. Hello, Mark. He's just finishing off a Hello. tiny rebel rhubarb and custard. Can we just Any make good? a note of that? He's got it spelt right as well. He has. He has it. <laughs> yeah. How many people do not put the H in a rhubarb? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rhubarb. <laughs> I meant the word Mark. Yeah, he's spelt your first name properly, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got it right. He's got it right. Got right. Like these commoners to put a K at the end of it. Shocking. <laughs> oi, oi, Chris's beer reviews is in. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, Chris, how you doing, mate? How are you, mate? How was your interview, Chris? Oh, God, yeah, he did it with Thomas. He was on with Thomas tonight, yeah. He's still, he's still alive. He's still alive then. That's all good. That's all good. Them questions are mental that he comes up with. Absolutely. Oh. I just like I've never even thought about that before, you know. It's like he ripped my rib cage open and looked into my soul, mate. It was um, one of them. <laughs> I didn't know who I was as a person until I got interviewed by Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> just things that I'd never even thought of. I was just like, okay, that's that's a question to ask. Love it. Uh, what do you call a blind man perfectly walking around in the dark? A DLA fraud. Is that disabled living allowance? It might be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming it's really funny. But I don't know. Can I just point out one thing? There is a distinct lack of curtains on Paul's streams. Paul, not happy. A lack of soft furnishings on these streams. It's all neon all of a sudden. <laughs> the, channel had to, the channel had to progress. It had to move on. We had to move away from the curtains. It had to happen. It had to happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Captain Me. This is all for you. This is all for you. I'm making right, a mate. I'm going to make a move because I've got a baby to take care of. Top Thanks man. for having me on for an hour or so. Um, goodbye, everybody. I hope you yeah. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the week. Cheers, Mark. Take care, mate. See you soon. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey, <laughs> uh, Mark, how would the Ewoks deal with COVID? It's a good question. I've got a quality vocation start. I'm not sure to save it for tomorrow or for the weekend. Do it now, mate. Tomorrow. The Arbor Wheat beer is called That's What That's Wheat, bro. That's wheat, bro. It's a Sabro American wheat beer in a cream can. Nah, I've definitely not had that one. Definitely not had that one. Captain Me, he watched would eat it for breakfast. <laughs> I'm so skinned, I can't even pay attention. Hey, we're done being done up by kickers. Kippers rather. Come on, I said I've got a restraining order. Oh dear. Chris Beer Reviews, never mind the Ewoks, the Tuscan Raiders will smash it. Right, I'm off, take care. Cheers, Mark. Thanks for joining us, mate. Uh, Rain of facts, steroid abuse, my WWF China's three times the size. Is that is that true? Is that true? Did the majority of men bash their crumpet about in the other days? No, to be honest. <laughs> uh, never a fan of Ricky Gervais until I watched Afterlife. Yeah. I, I, like, I loved... Um, Ricky Gervais is stand up and that, but yeah, seeing him in in afterlife, it, yeah, a whole new, a whole new appreciation for the guy after that. It was very good. <clears throat> so I'm hard, I'm hard. I don't cry. Exactly what the prince said to the Jack. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, uh, Newcastle won't stay up as Eddie Howe and buying Chris Wood. Ugh, you never know. Have I watched AEW? I watched a bit of AEW. Um, I've not actually watched the whole show. I, I watched some of the highlights on YouTube and that. Um, 
I'll be honest, what I've seen, I'm not really impressed with. They've got all this talent there, but from what I can see, all they do is run around and kick each other. <laughs> they had, um, who was I watching? Daniel Bryan, or Brian Danielson, as he calls himself now. Great name change. Daniel Bryan, and he was up against, I don't know, some other long-haired geezer for the title. And it was literally just running from one side to the other, kicking each other. And I was like, what, where's the wrestling? No one's wrestling. I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. I haven't watched enough to make a proper assessment, but I'm not impressed so far, if I'm honest. Uh, Gerard Tricaza, Paul Gascoigne. Genius. Genius. Ever played the cash grab FIFA Ultimate Team? I've not. I've not. I hardly really play FIFA online, to be honest with you. Do like a bit of FIFA. Uh, Gerard's a scouser. He'll never manage England. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't like scousers in charge. And oh, did I cry until we got the so, until we got the bag of sweets out? Oh, every cloud. Oh my god. I'm Roddy Pe- Roddy Pickering. Slightly catching up with chat. We're getting there. I'm going to catch up. Wrap it up. No, Jack Cow sweets. Harvey Elliott is across the front three at number ten. Uh, Disco's in. Hello, Disco. Evening, gents. Happy Burns Night all. Happy Burns Night, Disco, to you. Um, Travis says, I sent Mark a picture of a magnificent tropical rum porter. Didn't work today. Currently 9.30 in the morning. But yes, it's the first public holiday I've had off in about six years. Fair play. Fair play. You've got to have a day off every now and then, yeah. Got to. Paul Fickley's he's caught up with the comments. What is he drinking? <coughs> Too much whiskey, apparently. Ah, cool. That was a big one. That's what she said. A hey, up disco, says Luke. Uh, not happy for me to spot Argyle online, throw away a two goal lead at Fleetwood. Oh dear. Still beers are tasting good, though. Disco, not the one. Why do we do it to ourselves? Follow football teams that get your hopes up and then bang. They rip your heart out of your ass. Uh, enjoy the day, Travis. Try not to get bitten. Hard to do when everything and everyone wants to kill you. <laughs> That's it, I win it. I can I couldn't be a gardener in Australia. I don't think I could do it. You know, spiders over here, you just nudge them out of the way. Ones over there will eat your face. And that's a bit worrying. It's like them um the huntsman spiders they get over there. You know, big as your pissing hands. You know, that, ooh, I think I could deal with that. This guy saying, oh, Luke. Uh, Luke says, uh, Erop is a Von Red. A Von Red. Uh, Thompson has laughed out loud. Very low levels of carbonation comment on the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am hilarious, it's got to be said. Well, the beers I plan to have for the weekend, down to two. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Thanks, Paul and Mark, you Ewok molesters. Thank you. Max was a Swede. Hard northern and round. That's a turn it for the books. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, dear. Love it. This guy says the best haggis I had was deep fried at uh, Coyer's Cafe in Belgrove, Glasgow. Somebody's bound to know it. There you go. Mark's more judge, gr- much gr- judge grinder than dread. Is that Judge Grinder? Judge Grinder. I don't know what that is. Um, thoughts on the new Spider-Man movie? Couldn't give a shit. I'm not a 12-year-old. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Do you think the new Matrix is any good? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. I hope so, because I like the old ones. Uh, it will be better on the web, says Luke. Um, will you see yourself getting a virtual reality headset at any point? No. <laughs> no, probably not. They did them things where you put the phones in, didn't they, a couple of years ago? And everyone at Christmas had the massive thing on their face and they were looking around the front room. I don't know, I can't see it catching on. It would have happened by now, surely. Um, Tom Stock's favourite horror of all time. My favourite horror of all time is probably The Conjuring. Um, I went to see that at the cinema and Jesus Christ, jumped out my skin. I tell you what, if if everyone goes to a horror film at the cinema once in a while, it clears out the cobwebs, makes you jump. I went to see The Conjuring, and uh, 
Oh, mate. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. It's uh, if you've not seen the Conjuring, it's um, it, it's based on the um, the investigations of um, I've forgotten their names now. There were a couple. They were like par paranormal investigators, Warrens, the Warrens. They were based on the real life investigations of the Warrens, and one of them was about a, a family that moved into a house, and they they reckon they've been a load of sort of like, sacrificial. Uh, murders and things happened there years ago and there was like a demonic presence in the house um creepy as fuck creepy as fuck i recommend it really good uh, i'll do some questions from thomas do you believe in ghosts um do i believe in ghosts um kind of kind of it's it's, it's a, yeah i guess i do i guess i do because the stories come from somewhere right you know, I've never seen the ghost myself, but um, I know people that have said that they've seen things that they can't explain. And I know they're not the sort of people that would talk waffle, generally. So I believe there's something, you know, it's a bit like, um, it's a bit like the alien question. And where people see things in the sky that they can't explain, you know. I, yeah, I, I think I think there's there's things, I think there's spirits and things, yeah. Uh, Mark is off because he's had a 17% belter earlier. Airs on the chest. Exactly. Exactly. He's now got airy balls. Uh, when was the last time he cried? Uh, Sunday night. Watching the last episode of Afterlife. That was the last time I cried. Uh, would you go to space if you knew that you could never come back to Earth? Um, no. Probably not. If you could pick a theme song. To describe where your life is at right now, what song would you choose? Oof. <laughs> That's a great question. If you could pick a theme. That's a great question. That's one I need to think about. I need to think about that one. If you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? Uh, I would like to be able to speak Spanish fluently. Like that. That would be great. If I could speak Spanish, just like that, I'd be chuffed. Uh, if you had a warning label, what would yours? What, what, what would yours big weakness? All oh, right. If you had a warning label, what would it be? Right. Um, when I'm at work and I've got my headphones on, if I could have a label, and at that point it'd be like, "Don't fucking talk to me." <laughs> international sign language of just leave me alone don't talk to me let me get on with my work don't talk to me uh what's my biggest weakness beer uh what's your biggest fear my biggest fear i don't know i don't know and what's been your most embarrassing moment uh <laughs> no, I think I think the only one I can think of was when uh remember when everyone used to buy them popper trousers, the Maddy Dash trousers that had poppers on, like all the way to the top to the bottom, you could rip them clean off. <laughs> I remember we had uh, a muffy day at school and my mate grabbed hold of my trousers and ripped them clean off and I I was chasing him around for ages in my pants trying to get them back. That was pretty fucking embarrassing. Um enjoying the dipper. Uh, spruce Willis from uh, Declaw Brewery. Nice, 8.2% brewed with spruce pine nibs. Oh, that sounds fantastic, Jim. That sounds awesome. Uh, Paul, imagine Simo was David Brent. I suppose I'll create an atmosphere where I'm a friend first and the boss second, probably an entertainer third. <laughs> uh, dear. Tom, uh, there were some tough questions tonight with Thomas, but I enjoyed them. Yeah, all good. Um... I enjoyed the stream, says Tom. I only caught half of it though. Uh, can we be a cheeky sausage? Hello, mate. You all right? <laughs> what are you sipping? Uh, Glen Morangy. Glen Morangy. Um, I've got a 12 year old uh, rum, not rum, Jesus Christ. Sherry cast finished. So apparently the whiskey's just hit because I now can't talk. Sherry cast 12 year old Glen Morangy. And I'm also sipping on a, a Bell Haven's 80 shilling, uh, which just isn't worth talking about. Um, where's he gone? Has the video dropped off? 
Uh, crummy in the house. Tommy's saying hello to Crummy. Jim's saying he's crumminess. Tom's waving at everyone. Uh, Tom says, Crummy, do an impromptu live. So Tom's doing it. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I'm going to do two and a half hours. Luke says, you fell off a chair, Crummy. The stream is okay. Crummy, yo, 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 in the house. Tom says, live. Hi, all good cheers. Very tired, but can't complain. Good man. Uh, Tom talks, unless you want me to stream whilst I sleep, won't be very entertaining. Uh, Tom is pissed, not tired. <laughs> that was weird. When I added my first comment, the video dropped off, but fine after a refresh. Yeah. All good this end, I think. I think. Tommy, no crummy. Damn crummy. Been a long day. Been a long two weeks. There you go. Travis says, Huntsman spiders are your friend, mate. They look mean, but they're harmless to humans. They keep the bug population down. The white tail and red back is a totally different story then. Then there's the snakes. Excuse me. Yeah, the red back. Is that the um is that the funnel web? Is it the funnel web spider? It's got the red back. You get some big ones, didn't you? Funnel webs. I didn't realize how big funnel webs get. Uh John says, How levered are you on a scale of one to ten? I'd say I'm at a f no, I'm at a six. Right now I'm at a six. I feel like all of a sudden the whiskey has just gone bush and hit me in the face. I quite like it. I quite like it. Uh what's happened, Crammy? I ain't afraid no ghost. Sorry, exit in stays left. Uh five for a Tuesday. Uh Luke says, Johnny Boy. Tom said Tuesday. Hey up, Trav. Who knew I could play the didgeridoo? John smashed it on the didgeridoo earlier. Smashed it. It was good. Uh, Jim, favourite horror movie, The Thing by John Carpenter in the 80s. That was a good film. Travis says, good evening, Johnny. Travis laughing at Lords. Uh, we don't want to know what you do. You did redo, John. Which Jack might want to know. Filth. Chris is saying hello to John. Tom's laughing. Lords saying happy Australia Day. Uh, Luke says, uh, Stanislaus uh, Akisova says, you, says you're ready, Jim. I have no idea. I have no idea. Paul Rowe's quick release trousers. You heard it here first. We're all getting older. We're all getting older. You know, you never know. You never know. Quick release trousers in the future. John says, hello, Chris. How are you doing? Ever had a case of severe di diarrhea after a night out? Yeah. Um... Yeah, but I don't normally get it till the following day with me. It's weird that. I have had that. Well, I've had a really bad stomach like the day after a lash up. I've been on the toilet like three, four times. That's pretty bad. Uh, what time are you going till? I'm going to wrap up in a minute, actually, because it is getting on a bit. And we've all got to get up in the morning. Well, I'm assuming most of us got to get up in the morning. The outtakes for Afterlife are hilarious as well. Not sure how Gervais ever gets a project finished. It's a good point, isn't it? They do a lot of them. Uh, John saying hello to Jim. Uh, I'm all good. John says Chris survived a great interview with Thomas from Window Beer Reviews tonight. Really enjoyed it. We're gonna have to watch this back and see what he done Chris up with because these questions are incredible. I mean, Tom just tried to ask me a few of them and I bottled them. Uh, John says hello, Luke. Chris Thomas does not mess about. Uh, he's saying hello to Tom. Tom offer a slash if you're back when I get back. Bonus. Have a week, son. Get it out. Uh, also, hello, Jimmy. Superb podcast, mate. Enjoyed it as usual. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for getting involved. Uh, hi, John. Placing an order tomorrow. I'll do it tonight. But the 21, 18, and 15 year old whiskey is hitting well. Yeah, boy. It is bad as night. It's the law. So. Hmm. Ah. No, he doesn't, John. It was very good. Um, what says, hi, crummy beard. Jimmy says, what up? Oh, it's Brian Crow. How drunk are you out of 10 tonight? Tom says, hi, handsome Jay. Uh, always laughing a loop. Usually after a dodgy kebab. Yeah, that would do it. A dodgy donner. Oof. Lord says, Tom Stock, zero. He's not had a drink. John's been dry this evening. Tom Stock's fair play. It is a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday, to be fair. Um, right. I've caught up with a chat. Um, and I've nearly done two and a half hours. So this would actually be a perfect time to wrap it up. 
Um, so thank you for everyone who's got involved this evening. Um, this went better than I thought we would. Um, happy uh, Burns night and happy Australia Day to Travis, who's in the chat. Thank you, dude. Um, but yeah, I love you all. Have a good day tomorrow. And uh, I'll be back with uh, a beer review for you very, very soon. So uh, until my next one, you take care. Have a good one. A few more comments there. Boom. Lovely jubbly. All right. Take care, guys. Speak to you soon. Ta-da. <laughs>